And now, holy shit, folks. I always remind people, you know I am suspended for life for minor <laughs> hockey. <laughs> it's my duty to please the booty. Did you catch a rattlesnake and then drive home with it in your car holding it the whole time? <laughs> yep. Phil only drinks Coke. He doesn't drink water. I fuck quit. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Spit and Chick. Let's Hello, everybody. Welcome to episode 418 of Spit and Chicklets, presented by Pink Whitney from our friends at New Amsterdam Vodka here in the Barstool Sports Podcast family. The boys are back in town here at HQ, wrapping up another big road trip. Well, you guys had a big road trip, so let's see how everybody's feeling. You guys went from what? Philadelphia, Detroit, Columbus, back to New York. Mikey G, how are we feeling, man? That's a long one. Uh, I am feeling tired, but I'm also feeling very thankful that so many NHL teams and bars around these NHL arenas would open their arms up to biz and myself for this little big deal brewing on tour. On top of that, the fans, man. It's so fun getting out on the road and seeing our degenerate fans. And I <laughs> mean, I say the word degenerate with, with all the love in the world because we are degenerates as well. So to feel that reciprocation in love, especially when we're on the road, it's what keeps us going. And, I, you know, I'm really not that tired. I'm running off straight adrenaline right now, R.A. You know why? Because we are in NYC, but tomorrow we're going to Newark, New Jersey, and we got the New Jersey Devils game against the Chicago Blackhawks. Pretty much put it on a tee for hopefully what is going to be our first win on the road trip. You guys stink. We're the You mushest. guys are what? 0-3. 0-3. Every game's gone under. Just a pack of losers falling around these stadiums. <laughs> you can't get a home team a win. It, at least you were in Detroit, and then they got a win in Columbus. But still, I couldn't believe it. I'm following along from Jamaica, my um, respect, my. And I boy. saw you. I saw you guys. Jesus, bring some luck. So now I'm here. If Merle was here, it'd probably be a draw tomorrow night. But we know the Devils. They'll probably smack. Well, we're missing cost. you, Wit, because you were in Jamaica. Well, I'm, I'm here now, baby. I'm get here. A, get a little R and R for the back half of the season. Uh, not only did the Flyers take the L that night, but me and you took L's too. We took oh. cakes off the face from fucking gritty. Your like, sciatica looked okay though on that flop you took. No, that's you how you a cure it. Player, that's how it? you cure it. Ice, <laughs> ice cream cake, ice, icing, have a fight all with of it. A crazy fucking mascot. That's yeah. how you cure your sciatica. Well, I, t- I was plotting to get RA behind the scenes, and I said, hey, we're I think we we're gonna get him up by the seats. We ended up getting called out to with the we had the Cooperalls on and a jacket. And I could tell something was up, and the next thing you know, I got one right square, square in the jaw. Did you see how hard he hit me in the face with that cake? Yeah, he buried you. Like a Peter I thought shot. you knew it might have been coming because you had the jacket on. You were trying to cover up your clothes. So you didn't know. That was supposed to get R.A. Well, we were in the back plotting. Me and, and we were doing a little content video with Gritty, and then he went behind my back like all the rest of those dirtbag mascots. Other than Howler. And uh, Stinger, Stinger's our guy. Stinger's now our. He's. I on, thought wasn't there a story about Howler in the past few years? He's a complete goon. No, no, no. He, he you know, we're boys. Am I am no. I remembering correctly? No, no. He expl- he explained to me that me putting on his costume was against. Biz oh, asked yeah. to, to like, try it on his costume. It was like putting on like a priest robe. Like the guy took major offense to it. Yeah, putting on the, the, the Pope's diddling. costume basically. So he said no, no go. We 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 had a little bit of a battle and then we hashed it out. So Howler's in the good book. So is Stinger, and maybe a couple other ones around. Definitely on the hit list are Bowie. Gritty's at the top of the list now. He silly, oh. silly stringed me last time we were there. Now he caked me in the face after I thought maybe we'd be boys, and then of course NJ Devil, who I'll probably have a run in with today as this pod's dropping Tuesday. Yeah, it was nothing quite like being in a, whatever locker room we were in with a voiceless furry, like, planning this out. Because he couldn't talk. He's in the thing. And we're doing all hand signals with Gritty to figure out what we're doing. And we were supposed to, like, double team you. And he's actually sandbagged me when we got out there. Hit me in the fucking face with the cake. Try to get me again. Then Grinelli got, got involved. Tried to mush cake in my face. So I had to ruin his The only guy that. providing yeah. excitement for the Philadelphia Flyers right now. I guess you could say torts, too. Torts. But yeah, yeah, yeah. Just a, just a complete scumbag going behind both of our backs. So that just summarizes what Gritty's about. Had a hell of a sign from Maroon, though. We'll get into that. We oh, have yeah. Pat Maroon joining us. Jack Edwards' favorite player. Yeah, a little bit later. Yeah, we got uh, Pat Maroon and Shane Doan joining us a little bit later. But uh, first off, to the, the Big Dale Bruin event. Uh, the first night we were out in Philadelphia. Great turnout. All the fans who showed up, awesome time. And then we did a little bottle signing. Uh, gee, what's the name of the pack? Fine Show. wine and good spirits. Fine wine and good spirits. Uh, a great two nights in Philadelphia with you guys. And then you guys continued on. So how, the, how was Detroit? How was Columbus? Well, go, just going back to reiterate what Grinnell yeah. said, big thank you to the Philadelphia Flyers organization. And, you know, it, it, it does suck that it's not as lively in that building right now because the 
team's not doing so well. I would say they probably had about 13, 14,000 there. That oh, was like the, the quietest I've ever yeah, heard in NHL uh, Arena, which was shocking because yeah. we went to Columbus a few days later, who was just as bad, and it was like double the length, double the capacity. Yeah, the, 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 the Flyers fans, a, a scumbag group of people overall but people i really respect and like they're scumbags but like they're passionate and i i think that it's been a long time now where they're just sick and tired of being sick and tired and i caught a game i caught a game uh, on tv recently i don't forget who I remember who was it who it is against it was it was it was you could hear a pin drop and and it's tough and and you know that's why i think bringing you guys in at least a little excitement gritty gets to do something worthwhile but they did. But they did roll out the red carpet for us. They were a tremendous hosts. Uh, we got to do the event at one of the bars on the concourse. A uh, bunch of Chicklets fans there, and we're going to continue to try, uh, try try to do that type of thing, especially at the venue. It does make sense. But as we moved on, our Ray, we ended up going to this bar that was just outside of the rink, uh, the beautiful Little Caesars Arena, and we're going to get into the way that constructed. Play, I heard it. the place is sick. It's, Unbelievable. It might be the best bar in the yeah. league, and the way they yeah. went about how they designed it. But we went to this bar called the Tin roof and the labat crew is there and they but it, this was such a fun atmosphere live music going on before the game everybody's morale was extremely high they had about 10 cases for us to give away to the fans so just all in all like for us to be able to get on the road and get people to try the new big deal brewing uh beer along with rip and pink whitney shots and get all buckled before we go over to the games this is a formula that we love and we're going to continue so uh going over to the rink though we were talking to some people behind the scenes they said when they before they built it uh the ownership group they asked everybody they asked the, the home team they asked away teams they asked uh, people who come in for concerts they asked fan and they they accounted for every square inch of that arena as to where you would sit and what you should be seeing and what the atmosphere should be and and the, the way that you hear the sound system so overall we were on the press level to begin and that, then we and then we went into the illish box that which was is the owner's box yeah I mean, and i've never seen a box like this there was one room just a, a room in this box that had two couches and a fireplace nothing else in the oh, room I wonder what goes on there <laughs> <laughs> they had it they had a legit like separate bedroom dude there was like three or four different rooms in this place well, it, wasn't it, was, a, it wasn't a bedroom was it no no i mean no. you could use it however yeah, you, you want, could sleep but... on the couches kind of like ra does yeah <laughs> ra would Any consider a that a bedroom any room's a bedroom you sleep in it yeah yeah exactly very true RA. But, very true but he, he's nice kid what's his first name ronnie ronnie illich he's our oh, guy oh yeah we hung with him at the uh at, At the, the Chicklets Cup Chicklets in Cup, yeah, I remember running into him. Yeah, yeah, he yeah. came over and got us after we went to the Alumni Lounge, yep. which is another cool experience. No hats allowed, by the way. Big Al was at the front door saying, hey, buddy. Wow, gas, no lids. Gas the two. Show a little respect to Stevie Y and the boys. Stevie Bongrips would not be happy with mm -mm. that hat on right nope. now. Uh, so then, yeah, that's when we went over and we watched the rest of the game and we, we got to meet uh, his grandmother, who is now the, the basically yep. the full owner of the yep. team. And, uh, so that's Mike Illich's wife, or yep. the, yes. the late Mike Illich's wife? Okay. Yes. And they own the Tigers still as well. And Little Caesars Pizza, so they are, uh, they're sitting pretty They're and, doing all right. Yeah. And, and talk about a team. So I was there when I was doing radio the first year it was built when I was working with the Coyotes, and obviously the team at that time was starting their rebuild. They were right at the bottom. And you know the building was a little bit dead. It was fucking rocking there. Wild in there. The Golden Knights were in town. I thought that the Detroit played fairly well. Uh, probably getting way too much block. But right now, man, Vegas is rolling in their wagon. Unfortunately, they did not get the win. But the, not not for lack of effort from the crowd. Great, great energy in that building. There's so much buzz about the team, though. Even just talking to the fans outside, like they are so excited for the Yeiser plan. St Stevie Y. Play, them being in the in a playoff spot right now is pretty impressive. I think people thought they'd be competitive, but this is good right now. I Absolutely. Stevie Y has completely injected new life into this team, and, and it's awesome to see an original six. And by the way, they're fucking jerseys, seeing them on, on oh, the their, best. I, I, the I red know, jersey. I know best. every year, I believe the Chicago Blackhawks get the best rated jersey in all of pro sports. I would put the Red Wings over the Blackhawks. The wing wheel league. is so money. It's so classy. So money. I'm looking at your jersey now, Columbus Blue Jackets. Your first time there. I know that, Granelli. What was that? What was Columbus like? People rave about it. I Great unfortunately city. missed it, but good time or what? Uh, tin Roof was awesome, as I mentioned. I kept it on the rails, but when I got to this R-Bar in Columbus, 
these people were so rowdy. They were so excited to go watch a hockey game. And I didn't realize how hardcore our fan base was there. So I got a little bit tipsy after handing out probably 20 cases of beer. These beer mitts. This is what all these kids and fans are doing now. So they've been stacking them. So we're going to keep looking for these for all you people crushing big deal brews. And maybe the, the, whenever people surpass one another for the biggest stacks, we'll send you a big deal brewing merch package c- courtesy of Grinelli online. He'll be able to track you down. But everybody at our bar, everybody at Tin Roof, everybody at every spot we went to really took care of us. But uh, as far as teams rolling out the red carpet, they had us involved in even more social content that we, we signed up for. Grinnell. I've never seen a team open their arms like the Columbus Blue Jack have. That's why I said top five city in the NHL. Uh, okay, but, we're going to get to that right uh-oh. now. So I woke up to see a tweet from Grinelli. I went to bed at 7.30 last night and woke up at 7 a.m. I don't know the last time I got 11 and a half hours. It was amazing. I woke up at 4 to hose, right back in bed. I was like, oh, am I awake? Nope, right back to sleep. I needed it after a long vacation in Jamaica. Mm -hmm. So I wake up, and I'm just going through Twitter, strolling, and I see Grinelli tweets. Now, I actually really like the city of Columbus, and I'll say it's an underrated city. It has amazing golf courses. The people are friendly. It is a very nice, clean downtown. But I see Grinelli tweet, top five city in the NHL. I don't know what you smoked. He got in his feels. Our bar got him in his feels. Okay, you must have been crippled. Can you now say you were crippled? Absolutely crippled. So <laughs> Pasha came down to the hotel room this morning, and he's like, hey, so what, what got you with that tweet? And I'm like, what tweet? And he's like, well, look at Twitter. He's like, he commented on your tweet. I'm like, what did I tweet? Oh, you didn't even remember sending I'm it? Like, I, I was like, I thought I took the night off from Twitter. I and think I go Stinger on. might have sent it from your, for your account. I had like six tweets in a row, though, at one point where it's like, I love Columbus. This is the best <laughs> place on earth. Bought, he bought real estate there during <laughs> the game on Zillow. Basically, yeah. But you see the video of me at the end of the game, and I'm like. So, so I watched. <laughs> I went back and watched that. You were, you were obviously smothered. And now, like I said, great arena, too. And that arena gets loud in the one year yes. they beat Tampa. But, I mean, when the league has uh, cities like Chicago, Dallas, uh, New York, uh, we'll keep, I'm drawing blanks right now. I'm drawing blanks. Well, Vancouver, Toronto, um, Scottsdale. It's like the list goes on and on before you reach Columbus. So top five, maybe a little bit I of a reach. I would say top five undercover cities. Boom. That's fair. Nashville. That's fair. I didn't even say Nashville. So, yeah, top five under. That's fair. An underrated city. So Very people fair. in Columbus, no, I appreciate you. I respect you. I just had to call my buddy for calling you a top five city. No offense taken whatsoever, I hope, by me towards you, but you're underrated. You do 15 Pink Whitney shots, any city you're in is That's a top oh, five you city. You could be and you'd be having a time. <laughs> yeah, you'd be in a fucking body bag <laughs> if you did 15 shots of Pink Whitney and Qatar. But uh, a great experience. You drink pink? <laughs> you got... <laughs> But, uh, but Biz, we, we got to go back to the Blue Jackets. Like they were a, 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 a team has never opened their arms like they did for us. They offer us basically anything we want. We did you shoot sit- the cannon off? Uh, we t- we actually touched the cannon, and the guy had to scrub, scrub it off. Or you can, yeah. you're not allowed to touch the cannon. That's one pissed. of the rules. So we, we oh really? They didn't yeah, like we, us touching the cannon. Yeah, we we upset him early on. So that was like the mascot being mad. So like it's the cannon guy who's mad, not the team. So right? I think Grinelli was sucking up when he sent that tweet to, to, at hopes that we didn't end up in the clink for touching the cannon. That's like the number one rule when you walk in the building. They and Biz had, fucked the thing. Biz went out. Oh, you? No, I was not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You did what the Dolphins try to do occasionally. No, I wasn't. And they even gave us these lovely. Jersey, so I'll be rocking at the whole pod, uh, and and in very strong consideration, RA to make my fourth team. I got the Coyotes, yep. I got the Leafs, yep. I got the Flames, yep. and we're gonna see maybe Columbus. Get in early, you get like in while bet, you're young. Like me betting futures at the beginning of the season. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, RA's got team, every team to win the World Cup. Te- team does have a, a ways to go. They have some big pieces. Wierenski clearly is a big, big miss on the back end right now due to his injury. I think he's, what, out with a shoulder? Yeah. Yeah, I think he's out for the season. Yeah, Torn Labrum, I think, Yeah, right? Torn Labrum out for the season, but Johnny Ham and Cheese was buzzing. The amount of chances that guy creates, he's a fucking hell of a player to watch. And someone even said that uh, th- that season tickets went up an insane... The minute they signed him, the the, the influx of season tickets they got signed I thought signed they up. told us like 300% it went up, like something like out. I heard sixty like percent, but hey, Grinelli's still Same on thing. that same buzz, and and uh, and the yeah, over exaggeration continues. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm bummed out. I, I missed a place called Abath, right up my fucking alley, I guess. But we did meet Carter Hot when we were in Philadelphia too. We met up, met up with Hazy for a few pops. He brought Carter Hot, and so it was pretty funny to finally meet up, meet the guy who uh, you know been kind of linked to with the, just by my accent. What's he guys. like? All right, you guys have a good combo. Yeah, yeah. After you guys left, we uh, we had another beer or so. Just shot the shit uh, with my buddy Richie on the fight apartment. Then. 
great kid. Great kid. Just had a lot of laughs, you know, shooting the breeze with him. And sent him a DM after. And he's like, hey, nice chat. And just, uh, yeah, ple- pleasant guy. Great, great, great time. And again, catching up with Hazy is always a good time. So, oh, my God. Is he a funny bastard? Uh, and we're not done yet. Uh, well, tonight, Tuesday night, Mike, American Whiskey, 51 Edison Place in Newark, correct? Yes, that is we're correct. We're rocking with uh, the Brat Pack, getting ready for the Devils game. So uh, come by if you're, if you're in the area. Absolutely. We're going to get it up, get it done one more time. And we had a new Chicklets, et cetera. We're not calling it that anymore. The Game Notes podcast. What was on this week? Kangaroo Court? Chick- Chicklets Game Notes. We had a Kangaroo Court. Wait, I'll hand it over to you. We dumbing these guys in Kangaroo Court. And I think we've talked about what Kangaroo Court is on this podcast before. It was just in the locker room where, you know, it's a silly thing where you maybe a guy uh, guy in the team gets caught making out with a bar uh, or making out with a girl at a bar, a little PDA action. Maybe he gets fined 50 bucks. I've heard some crazy ones uh, in junior where a guy ends up sleeping with one of the guy's girlfriends on the team, which is an absolute no-no. You should be on the trade blocks if that happens. Yeah, you and, can't be doing that. Yeah, and then you get called in in front of the leadership group. Um, you know, back when I was playing, they would you know you would have to gear down and they would wheel you out uh, in um, in the a, laundry bin in the laundry cart. Whatever, whatever that may have been at the time. And then usually you have the import representing you as a lawyer who can barely speak English. So if, if, if you were getting called to kangaroo court and you were in your first or second year. It was chan- an auto loss. Auto loss. Count it up. You, you're, you're handing over your next two paychecks minimum to the to the fine fund, and the boys are going to have a little t- uh, fun with your money. Now, if you're pounding one of the guys on the team's girls, like I said, off the trade blocks, you shouldn't get another paycheck the rest of the year. And that, that, I mean, I don't, I don't think you've ever been a part of that, have you? Uh, no, no. Luckily, I can I could say I've never been involved in something like that. But in terms of the game notes pod, uh, we we smashed army. Bugsy didn't show up. Uh, he was too busy wrestling, doing his jujitsu moves, and figuring out the next way to choke somebody out on a golf course. Uh, so he didn't show up. So army was left alone. It, it was. <laughs> It was like the early scenes in my cousin Vinny trying to like become a lawyer. You know, Army had no idea what was going on. He brought up me hitting the ball by accident, which I then proved was an automatic not, an automatic not penalty because you're actually uh, allowed if you don't mean to hit the ball to replace it with no penalty. So that was kind of his. That was that argument. was the checkpoint. That was like, like all right, yeah. well, this guy's strong. And people were like, oh, you set up this argument. We didn't set up anything. We set up kangaroo court, and then we went there with our cases. We owned him. We were able to describe to the fans that listen to Game Notes about how they knew the rules. So, I mean, people will always complain. They're kind of starting to go against you and I, which I love. Bring on the hate, because we're going to keep coming like a freight train. Next one, who knows how that's going to go, though. And and so the, the I do have to shout out Merle's on Game Notes. He gave his, uh, he told me to say, he gave his, um, he gave his, what is it here? The Game of the Month, um, and that hit again. He's now 4-0 on his game of the month year to date so just check out this guy he had a double winner today in the um the what was the first soccer game croatia versus somebody japan Japan. and then he gave a double winner there and he gave a double winner in brazil versus whoever they played they played korea they played korea so check out merles you know this guy can gamble he's on fire and um what else do we i would say the the funniest part for me about it all was the beer bandit from the, the men's league so they, they they always bring up a point in in uh, these beer beer. It's league called beer hockey. league heroes store, uh, segment, and they they have all their fans submit awesome stories from the beer league, and you can take it from there. Yeah. So episode one, it was the shower sheriff, where you know he had to make sure you had a beer and you head over to the shower. You can't be the stinky guy leaving without hanging out with the guys and not scrubbing your balls off. Uh, and then this one was, you know, everybody. Everybody throughout the course of a, of a season is responsible for bringing at least a case of beer. Some, depending on how many guys on the team, maybe two. And everyone after the game has a couple of beers. Well, this guy throughout the course of the year was taking two or three beers from the beer pack, keeping them in his hockey bag, and and essentially gathering these beers over time. So when it was his turn to bring a case no in, way. his case his case was brought in because he kept collecting everybody else's beer. Imagine I've, being that guy. I've, well, I mean, I, I, I didn't hate it. I, I'm not gonna, it's a I, biz move. Come I on. Didn't, I didn't hate it. So, I can bust biz balls, and uh, there's no chance you would ever do that. No, I would not Come do on. that. But I also did defend it, and if the beers were going to go to waste, I like how the guy recycled. Now, of course, we went on and to discuss other things and other things and joke around about it. But it's a great reoccurring segment that's going to keep happening on Chicklets Game Notes, and uh, I think Army and, and, and Merles are doing a hell of a job. And of course, that there's a part where me and Wit hop off, so they they go into their own subjects and keep going and keep talking. So make sure you check. 
check that out. That was only episode two, and those drop once a month. And DM your stories to Merle's and also comment them on the YouTube page. Comment them on the comments on the podcast on the YouTube page, and we'll read them there. Okay. All right, guys, before we continue, here's a word from our presenting sponsor. The holidays are just around the block, so make sure you're all stocked up on the old Pink Whitney. You can also hit your local bar to get some Pink Whitney. You might want a little shot action, a little club soda. Either way, get that fine pink lemonade-flavored vodka, the good stuff from New Amsterdam Vodka. Pink Whitney. Go get some. Uh, and while we were in Philly, we got to see some history made. Steven Stamkos got his 1,000th NHL point when he assisted on Nick Paul's second period goal. Pretty cool to be there, witness that. The whole team come out, congratulated him. Nice little history made. Uh, let's see, 95th NHL to hit 1,000. One of only 10 active players at that number. He's the first Tampa Bay Lightning player to hit 1,000 points. Uh, but that wasn't the only Lightning news all week. Uh, buddy Pat Maroon had a little... Uh, well, no, sorry, quick. Okay, I just yeah. wanted to shout yeah. out. I wanted to shout out Stamkos a little bit. Ugly goal. Yeah. What? It was an ugly goal. Well, yeah, it was. It was Paul who scored it. Correct? Yeah, but like, the, and it was a foot. second assist, right? Yeah, it was one of those. But who cares? They don't ask how. They ask how many. But the only thing I wanted to bring up, and Patty Maroon talks about Stamkos a little bit, but the injuries that this guy went through earlier yeah. in his career, it's an amazing amount of. Um, What's the word that resilience? I'm, resilience. Oh my and the one God, year, I'm great buzzing. job, Biz. Plus I'm, one. I'm, I'm, don't leave me knuckles. Thank you. Had knuckles. So. When he hurt his knee in Boston, he ended up missing the Olympics that year. It was just heartbreaking for him, right? And he's been through so much. And then he was able to come back and score that big goal in the bubble Stanley Cup final against Dallas. So just what he's done in his career is one thing. First overall pick and live up to the hype and become a two-time Stanley Cup champion. But to do it with the resiliency of battling through injury after injury, it made that thousandth point, I'm sure, even a little bit sweeter. Because there was times, you know, you wondered, like, is this guy even going to be able to stay healthy? And it's luckily enough, it's turned into the past few years, he's been able to be out there a lot. What a breakdown by you. I just didn't want to go over that guy's getting a thousand points. No. Battling through injury every single year. No, it seemed and, like for a while. And, and, and sometimes guys go through those injuries and you know the, the the mental capacity it takes to get back. And remember he, he Especially up, after the first one. And, and also the cup run where where he was yeah, injured. So yeah. he's had some pretty traumatic things happen in his career, but I'm sure that he would probably uh, attest a lot of it to to his uh, partner in crime, Gary Roberts, with the off ice stuff. That's how that's how he's been able to stay at the top of his game. And right now i want to say he's on pace for over what 35 40 goals this oh, late yeah, he's got career. 500 coming up did you see him mention that he had a ridiculous point streak going at one point with martin st louis and they got their sticks oh from yes fucking pearson yeah pearson, pearson oh. airport and let me say something else i saw that that uh Air Canada was named like the best airline in the North America yeah, again. A, <laughs> who is vo- who are the Bruins the Kim Jong Bears <laughs> voting on that's, that? That's some Kim Jong Un shit. That is it's the only airport. That is it's, it's the only airline. You have a fucking monopoly on the whole country. You can't get one flight from one place to the other. And Pearson's stealing <laughs> hockey sticks for NHL players. Just a, dis- a who, disgusting who, report coming out of that awful fucking airport. Who, who knew uh, Stamco setting a thousand points was going to bring up some post traumatic stress from your experience? <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. At Pearson God. Airport. Dude, Where? I went through customs for the first time. Um coming back from Jamaica I'm on since that like trip home. I was like shaking, <laughs> trying to figure out a way to get through the line. So um yeah, I just thought that was interesting. But, but you Air did Canada. Su- you what did- a Fugazi airline. You, you did summarize it, and I want to say that it was brought up because of what Robertson and who's the other one who's got a crazy point streak going right now? Mitch Marner. 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 Mitch yeah, Marner. And they were playing Marner was playing against Tampa when he was trying to tie it, and he ended up tying it that night. Or maybe he did he no, break he it? No, he beat it. He, he scored two goals, a shorty it. and a peeper. Yeah, he beat it, and um, and that's why I think Stammer was asked about it, and he mentioned, oh, I actually had one, and I didn't score the game after, so I'll always hate Pearson like the Whit Dog. That's probably why I did it. A couple of Leafs fans working uh, working the stick rack there. Just a horrible airport. Will the prime minister listen to Whit? Exactly. Hey, actually, we, will the prime I know we're going to be sending it to Patty here pretty yeah, quick, but yeah. we got we can't just graze over Mitchie Marner breaking that record 19 straight games with a point gets the shorty and the peeper in my opinion easily easily top three right wingers in the game I'm gonna say before it was number one uh, right I'm gonna I'm gonna say number one based on point production and everything he has done analytically over the last probably 18 months 
and, and the way that he's been able to perform. So congratulations to Mitchie Marner. Witt was all over you at the start of the year. And saying, look what happened. Yeah, I, he, I don't you're know welcome. why he's taking credit for it, but uh, you're a goat. So is Paulie, and I uh, wish the Leafs all the best. They, on they this, actually uh, have a game against Dallas tonight, I believe, and it's the first time ever that two players with an 18 or more point, game point streak are playing against each other in Robertson and Oh, I don't know how I don't have Marner. enough lotion in this segment to give uh, another wrister out to another player and we've been stroking off Jason Robertson quite a bit yeah. so we could keep it with the Tampa theme. I, w- I was going to ask you about this water bukkake biz. What should I take on these when players can yeah, be all over the, the place? I I like them. You saying bukkake on <laughs> TNT it's like Kevin Hayes every time I talk to him he's like how does he not get in trouble like Well cuz it's nope, a water bottle bukkake. But it's a bukkake nonetheless in your face. <laughs> When he when he when he tied it was at in in uh, in Toronto when he tied the record. Who was it? Uh, Eddie Olchek and Sittler were the ones who had had it currently for the Toronto yeah, Maple Leafs. Yeah. So when they come in the room, every time a guy hits a milestone, I want to say when Austin Matthews hit sixty goals, they hit him with the water bottle bukkake, and in fitting fashion. Marner ties the record, so when he comes in, they all give him the little celebration. I love it. I love it. Mitch he did Marner, the gritty he, right after he, I saw him. He's just in the zone right now. How can you not love this kid? He is oozing confidence, and he's got all these haters on his back, and he's just shrugging them off. We'll uh, see. We'll see, because the Leafs fans are going to start hating him. Too I when tweeted they lose this again out, this year and, and I might round. be like Grinelli getting into my feelings here. Something feels different. Oh about my the, God! Oh, no, no, I'm not no, no, doing no, this. No, no, no. Wow. Something feels. I'm not different. doing this. She Something said she feels me. different. <laughs> She and they got two me. goalies right now kicking, so suck on that, haters. And they got no fucking D Goal in the lineup. Goaltending wasn't the problem last year. Well, we're going to send a quick congrats to Corey Perry. Played in his 1,200th game Saturday night, talking about Tampa. Hall of Famer. We are going to get the Pat Maroon. In case you're unaware of the story somehow, uh, during the Tampa Bay-Boston game last week, the Bruins announced that Jack Edwards just come out of nowhere with some shitty things he said about Pat, and we wanted to bring Pat on to, to give his side of the story, so we're going to send it over to our pal Pat Maroon right now. Do you, do you want to roll the tape so people have even more context of what, what rant Jack Edwards went on for no reason? Yeah, sure. I didn't want to do it to hurt his feelings again, but we might as well for people who haven't heard it yet. Listen. 238 pounds. That was day one of training camp. I, I got a feeling he's had a few more pizzas between then and now. Yeah, that's before pregame. Yeah, right. <laughs> Fasting. <laughs> Chris. <laughs> Inadvertent fasting for Pat Maroon is like four hours without a meal. <laughs> but, hey, three cups in a row. Who can argue with his formula? All right, without further ado, here's Pat Maroon. And before we go any further, may I remind you folks, holiday drinking season has officially begun. That's right, Christmas parties left, right, and center. No Day's Wasted is here to get you through them. Feeling your best even after boozing. DHM Detox is the ultimate vitamin for when you drink. It's perfect for the holiday parties, stocking stuffers, and of course Christmas gifts. No more feeling sluggish and slow and useless the next day after boozing. DHM Detox is a 100% risk-free trial in your first box. So if you don't love it, they'll refund you. At the very least, give it a shot. And if you don't like it, you get your money back. Check out their recovery bundles for the best experience possible. They're a combo of DHM Detox, hydration replenishers. They're the only recovery products worth using because they work so damn well together. One, two punch. That's right. No days wasted. DHM Detox, the hydration replenisher. That's right, folks. DHM Detox, no days wasted. Check them out. And we're going to hammer you with a biz 30 promo code for 30% off at nodayswasted.co. Not .com, nodayswasted.co for no days wasted after drinking. Back to the interview. All right, it's been almost a year and a half since we had this three-time Stanley Cup champion on the show. He just started his 12th NHL season. He's about to believe, Mike, our first four-time guest here on the show. Ooh. Always a pleasure to welcome our guy, Patty Maroon, to the Spit and Chicklets podcast. How are you, my friend? Uh, great, all right. Thanks for having me, boys. Uh... I'm pumped up about this one. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Well, let's start off on a positive note. Uh, Steven Stamkos, your teammate, uh, beloved by his teammates. We were actually in Philly, 1,000 points. Like, what does this guy mean to you guys? Like, he's, he's just the nicest guy in the world. You guys all came on the ice. A very special moment, I'm sure, for you and the rest of the team. Yeah, I mean, he's 
I mean, that was pretty sick. Uh, never seen that done before. Never seen it. Uh, obviously, I saw it live when Boston with Patrice Bergeron. But as a teammate, your leader, your captain, um, that he he gets along with everyone. He's just like the nicest guy. Like you said, this is the nicest guy in the world. Um, but to see that that night in Philly was pretty pretty remarkable. And uh, he's about to hit a lot of milestones, though. That's just not the only one. He's what he's got a thousand games almost, and now he's all, almost to five hundred goals. So that's a that's a heck of a list and a heck of a career. But you know, he's an ultimate guy, ultimate teammate. He's just a great family guy and the nicest guy around the ring. So well deserved by Stammer. And then you guys had the, the like the ceremony the next game. It was at home against the Toronto Maple Leafs. People were commenting online. He got like 17 gifts on the ice. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, he had, uh, what, the two kids got a stick. He got a stick. Uh, the wife got flowers. His mom got flowers. And then we brought him wine, a putter. And then the owner brought him something. Yeah, it was just a shit show. It was hilarious. <laughs> is he, and is his he... little kid stole the show. He had like... The little Tiffany stick, whatever they give him, he's just banging it on the ice. He's trying to stick handle. So that was great. Oh, it was, it was perfect, though. It was a great night. That's but, yeah, what, he had, like, a ton of stuff. Is there a bunch of winos on the team? Like, do, do, you, do you know what kind of wine it was? Opus, I think. Opus 1. Do you guys, do you guys get into it on the planes and stuff? Do you guys bust out yeah, the Yeah, nice we bottles? get him some wine on the plane for sure. Hetty's a big wine, wine nut, headman, so – He's usually got the nice bottles at our table because we play cards at our table. So it's me, Stammer, Hetty, and uh, Hagel. So we always got the nice bottles of wine. How much better are these questions business firing off than the one on TNT? Yeah, shut the fuck up. No, Patty, listen. (laughs) Okay, first of all, I want to go into the Actually, it wasn't that bad. No, it wasn't. I love that you gave it to him, though. I think that there was a sentence missing in between, but just seeing (laughs) seeing your brain register it, and then you kind of like gave that face like, that was a stupid fucking question. What do you mean we're flying under the radar? We're fucking nasty again. We went to the finals the last three years. But but I I genuinely felt that not a lot of people, especially media-wise, were talking about you guys coming into this year, and you guys kind of have flown under the radar you guys are playing some great fucking hockey no i agree with you i think no one's really talking about us i think you you're right about that but i think yeah i was trying to obviously wrap my head around the question a little bit but uh we obviously still want to be a contender we want to be a good team i still think we have you know one of the strongest lines in the league and then adam paulie and killer and stammer to that mix that's having a heck of a year but i think we are we're playing better hockey. We have a great goaltender. We have a great decor. There's no reason um, we can't go back or, you know, have that itch again, you know, to grind one out again. Uh, because when you have a player like Cooch, I mean, anything can happen. And then you had Stammer in the mix because he's a, he's a game-time player too and pointer. And so it's, it's nice to have that depth. But, yeah, like you said, we have been flying underneath the radar, but we're playing better. And uh, with Vasi kicking in that, you, our odds are pretty well. You, you see Nick Paul, he grabbed the puck after uh, Stammer's 1,000th point. And he's kind of a guy that when he came over last year, I didn't know a ton about him. Um, you could tell right away it was important for you guys to grab him. But kind of explain to everyone w- how dominant he's been this year. I mean, this is a guy, you saw him in Game 7 against Toronto take over the show last year. But this year he hasn't slowed down one bit. And for the, you know, the common hockey fan who doesn't know a ton about him, what's his game like? Yeah, I mean he's a great power forward. I feel like he's got he's got some good foot speed. He's yeah. kind of deceiving for a big guy. He can move around. He can he's big in the face off dot. He can play two hundred feet. Uh he's got a great shot. Uh he's on the power play right now in the bumper spot. So um but yeah, he's just that guy that, you know, is always in the way. <laughs> yep. He's just always in the way and he's always at the right time. He's in the right spots at the right time. Uh, but he gets the job done. He's got a great shot, good hands, and for a big guy, he can move around. And uh, he he does all the little things right. You know, it's um, and it's good. I mean, I'm I'm so happy for him. He's actually come in right away, and he's producing this year. And Hagel's producing again this year too. So it's it's nice to see those guys getting rewarded and playing with some good players and getting an opportunity from uh, where they were before. Patty, when you guys started this season, uh, did Coop? approach the team in any way to say like wash away last year to kind of get the stink out of your mouth how did he how did you guys approach that no i think he uh obviously was devastating ra but i think for us 
he just kind of came in. I was like, listen, our training camp is going to be, you know, work. We're going to work. We're going to gel right away. We're going to see, you know, we have a lot of new faces, get the team together, you know, create that chemistry, that bond, you know, in the room, uh, you know, on the ice. And I think that's the most important thing away from the rink too. So uh, when you lose key players like Mac and Pilat and Ruda, um, you know, that's, that's a lot of leadership in that group. And uh, I think adding more pieces and seeing like, you know, Paul, he got the experience last year. Hagel got that experience of the taste of the, you know, going a deep run and they understand the process and, you know, what it takes. And um, yeah, he was just more like that. Just, you know, come in work, you know, some of these guys had a taste of it last year and, you know, when you get a taste of it, you want more. And I feel like, you know, that's a great, you know, great response. And, and um, he's got that swag to him that he knows to say the right things at the right time. And I think we have a great leadership group that understands, like, hey, like, if you look on the around the league, our team on paper is pretty pretty good still. And I, I'll take that, our team, against anyone. So, um, you know, I think it's just – in the beginning, it's hard. You guys know, like, it's, it's hard to, like, get going, get your engine going again. You know, three summers in a row, you don't even have a summer – and you're like, shit, I have to get back to the fucking grind again. And I think um, now we're, the beginning of the year, we were kind of just – we were just putting our skates on and going out there. Now we're getting our engine going. We're playing the game. We're playing the right way. And we're doing – you know, we're playing Tampa Bay hockey. Well, it's, so it's, it's hard to get those endorphins popping when you're going out for those playoff games that mean so much and then going back to just like a regular season. Like a ga- you know, game three of an 82 yeah. schedule, fuck off. <laughs> now, now, if it was your choice, do you – would you want the league to maybe minimize the amount of games? Don't you think 76 would be the perfect amount of games? Never going to happen. Yeah, I would say 72 or 74 would be a perfect amount. Or limit training camp. I think training camp's too long. I really believe that. I think we play way too many games. And, like, when we went to the bubble, that week or two weeks with no games, that was perfect. Like, it was perfect. Like, it's just training camp just drags on too long. We start too early, I think. September 13th is way too early. And, like, what are we – when was opening night? October 11th? Yeah. <laughs> First game? Yeah. I mean, that's long. That's a long training camp. I just think it's unnecessary, in my opinion, especially when teams go, do go on that deep run. I think you need more time. Yeah, by the time you're done crushing your uh... – well, we say big deal <laughs> brews on this podcast now. Maybe we'll get you a deal. But by the time yeah. you finally put those down, you got a month to relax, and then you're right back at it again. Yeah, exactly. And I think it's it would be better to shorten it, too. I think eight eight to seven games is too much. I only think uh, – because, I don't know, I feel like now the, the roster just gets eliminated right away. Like, after day two, it's like yeah, everyone's they, gone. Know. We already but, know our team going in. Yeah, so like you might as well just limitize yeah. training camp. I mean, yeah. you already know there's a handful of guys. I'm sure they know who's staying, who's going. Yeah, get these pigeons oh, out of here. <laughs> <laughs> get these fucking bums out of my stall, <laughs> trainers. Hey, uh, you, you you already mentioned Cooch, but I was laughing when we had you on the TNT broadcast. There was a point where he could. I don't know why you guys were on the ice together. But there was a seam to feed you, and he didn't do it. But then yet somehow he like did like a spinorama pass, and I don't know if you knew it was coming. But then you ended up making contact, but missed. And then you and, and they had the ISO cam on you after the game, and you looked at the heavens, and I was just fucking howling at your body reactions. They need to ISO cam you every game. <laughs> yeah, I was disappointed. I obviously haven't scored a goal this year, miss. So it's been uh, it's been a tough year. But when he made that. I thought, like you said, I thought it was coming right away, and then he kind of lost control of it, stuck with it, and then he just fired it. And I don't even – I I think I hit him in the corner. That's how bad the shot was. <laughs> That's why you look to the heavens. You're like, God damn it, that was my only chance to prove myself. I could play on this guy's line, and I blew I it. And I dumped it in the I corner. Blew it. I blew it. <laughs> hey, uh, I got to ask you another thing. You were involved in a scary, unfortunate incident with Evander Kane this year. I mean, did you have any idea? Like, the blades are so sharp. People don't realize how quickly and easily something like that can happen, but pretty scary once you probably realize seeing him sprint off the ice what happened, huh? Yeah, so honestly, guys, I had no idea I did it. Yeah. I thought Myers did it, and I was the one, like, screaming to get everyone, like, 
rush him off. And um, it's obviously a very scary uh, moment. And I was, I reached out to Vander. I texted him, Connor sent nice. me over his number and just, I, you know, I just said, sorry. I, you know, I didn't mean it. I didn't know I did it. You know, my son called me after the game. He's like, did you know you did that? I was like, I had no idea. And then he sent me the video and I was like, cool shit i did do that and um i felt so bad you know like i said i reached out to him um just saying sorry you know hopefully you have a speedy recovery and i felt so bad i was like man i, I feel so sorry um and um that stuff you know it's a freak accident i obviously did not mean to do that but it's a scary moment for me because you know i it could have been really bad it was a pretty bad situation and uh you uh, you obviously you you think about it and make sure he's doing okay. So uh, I'm glad he's doing better. I'm glad his recovery is doing better, and hopefully I can see him on the ice here soon. So um, it's just a freak accident that you never want to see in hockey because blades are sharp, and I'm a big guy. So like it could have been way worse than it really was. I guess. Well, okay, wait, do you have another one? Well, speaking of big guy, I mean, we can go into... <laughs> yeah, you teed us up for that one, Patty. <laughs> we, can, we can talk about the human donkey from Shrek himself, Jack Edwards. Now, listen, Patty, I've been, ta- I've been doing this podcast for, what, six Almost years, seven. seven years now. I've hated this guy from the minute it started. Just an absolute loser. And I'm curious, though, like, how did you find out what he said? How random was it in your mind? Take us through the entire night when you realized this clown opened his mouth once again to make a fool of himself. Well, I guess our trainer was in the back was uh, listening to the game and he heard it. I guess it was he was steaming. <laughs> he was steaming the whole game. And like the guys knew, like the guys that weren't playing were like, they knew, but they saw me and no one said anything to me. So everyone was like keeping it quiet because they probably don't want me to blow a gasket during the game. Uh, so. We're in the shower, and Sam was like, hey, did you did you see this video yet? And he's not changed yet. I'm in the shower. I was like, what video? And everyone's like, oh, God, you're you're not going to be too happy. And I'm like, what what's this video? Like, what do you mean? Like, what did I do? I'm like circling back and like, okay, what did I do? You know, did I do something stupid here? And I heard the video, and I was just in awe. I was like, why would someone do that? And, you know what was cool? My team had my back one. My team really thought it was fucked up for two. So I felt better in that sense. Like, you know, and I was like, okay, maybe. It's, and then I listened to it again. I'm like, that mother, like that, that was pretty fucked up. In my opinion, I don't understand why someone would go on and watch the puck go back to the Boston's end, back to Tampa's end, back to Boston's end, then back to Tampa's end, and still talking for a minute and 15 seconds. I just, I, there's no call. There's, it's not called for. If now, if I did something stupid or like if I was doing something and maybe he was saying something, but just to randomly just talk bad about someone for a minute and a half or whatever, minute 15 when I'm not even on the ice was just unnecessary, in my opinion. Um, I'm glad I cooled down because I didn't want to react on, you know, stupidity. I wanted to, you know, find a way and, do something and trust me guys i was steven Grinelli. i was texting him <laughs> oh really oh yeah yeah, oh, yeah. He was pissed. i was steven and i was like i i was yelling at my pr department I'm like i'm gonna what do i do and i'm motherfucking everyone I'm like where is he and i was like i my face was completely red like i just you know you should see and, his uh, teeth dude his teeth are hey so appa- jump start a puke it's hey, horrible so, so apparently they put him in rooms opposite of where the teams are at whenever they're on the road staying in hotels because he just like he's just a pothead again i guess he smokes a ton Is of he cr- a straight up? i guess I, I guess he smokes a ton of cron now that might be a complete rumor but we don't care we're just firing back at this point right but yeah, just some of the idiotic things he says. And Ra, you said it best. You said over the years, like it wasn't so bad, maybe early days, but it's just progressively getting worse for the way he acts on the air. Yeah, I mean, I've always been a Jack guy. I know he's a homer, but you know, I'm a Boston guy. He's been around for 15, 20 years, and he's just not good at, 
at the job lately. He's what sixty five now. I mean, you've heard of the game calls. They just stilted. The, he'll go like sixty seconds without talking. I don't know if the job is maybe past him. I mean, he's at retirement age. But you know what? He, with that pal, it was just it was so odd, Pat, so unnecessary. And and then he came out with his own statement, like, and all he did was reiterate. You know, you would have thought he would have apologized. He he just reiterated what happened and said, "Oh, I've reached out to him through the team," which uh, it was kind of a useless statement. Now, had you ever even met him before? Did you ever have any interactions with him ever? No, so he did. He did reach out to the team. He reached out to our PR department, and which which also made. And I don't want to throw Jack underneath the bus. Listen, oh, yeah, I'm not trying. To we will. Him. You haven't done that at all. I'm not trying to get him fired. Like that's not my goal here. You know, right. he, he, that's that's not my goal. Like, but he did email the team, and unfortunately, he said. Here's my contact number. Have Pat reach out to me. Unfortunately, I'm not going to reach out to him. So here's my contact hey, number. Hey, the g- g- give us and the number. We'll post it. it on the Chicklets Twitter account. <laughs> I'll, pr- I'll have email. Foley prank him for the. Actually, Foley probably likes him. I mean, Foley to go to dinner with the guy. He's <laughs> so I don't, Homer himself. I'm not, I'm not. You know what I mean. So I think that part of it was kind of upsetting. He didn't say sorry or nothing. He was just like, "Here's." If Pat, here's my contact information. Here's my email. Pat wants to reach out to me, which is unfortunate because I was like, you know what? As our guy's Brian Breesman. I was like, you know what? Just leave it alone. It's over. It's done. He reached out. Just wash it. And, you know, it's what's trying to what's figure out what we, what we can, can do to make this negative thing into a positive. And we 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 ended up sorting it out. It turned out to be an unbelievable situation on you know the tampa community and people around the league so it worked out great for those people for those people that aren't on social media so you guys ended up donating through the team and organization roughly fifty thousand dollars towards what which charity and for what purpose patty tampa tampa thieves and it's uh we we're basically People that, you know, get made fun of for their weight or are struggling with something in the past and, you know, mentally it can take a toll on you. And um, I think for us, we wanted to w- just find a way to turn a negative into positive. And we did. We, we It went viral for one. I think we're raising more than $50,000 right now. We've, we've got a lot of, you know, people that have been reaching out about it and um, – yeah, man. So it's it's it turned out it turned out good, and um, unfortunately, as players, biz, you probably would have had the best comeback line, probably, and wit. If you guys were playing the game, you guys probably would have steamed off and f- wrote something. But you know, it was just best I did it because at the end of the day, I didn't want Jack fired. And then if I said something stupid, then I don't want to get canceled, right? Then everyone's yeah. gonna be at me, and then. It's just a shit storm from there. So I was just like, let let's see if we can figure something out. And uh, yeah, but it's been great. You know, I, we've I, I, yeah. What I should get some of that money that's been donated. I was <laughs> tortured about my body my whole career. It's not fair. <laughs> it's not right. I'm scarred. Uh, hello. <laughs> yeah. Listen, it's, exactly been, it's right. been it's been my whole career. And like I told, so it does like upset you. Guys, I'm actually you. starting a question shaming charity, uh, Patty. Do you want to donate to that or what? I'm the coach, yeah. <laughs> Do you want to do you want to donate? Yeah, I'll donate a hundred okay. bucks. Okay, thanks. Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. And I'll just buy a, a, a one of your cameos back with it. Are you still on cameo? I am, but I haven't done it in a while. I'm. I've been. Uh, yeah, I've been useless on that thing. I don't even think my app works anymore. They kind of they too, uh, they shut me down for a little bit. Too many requests. <laughs> too many requests, and then I'm not doing them. That's the problem. Pat, it seemed like a, a lot of people online were like kind of putting words in him. Although he's a pro hockey player, he's a tough guy. It didn't bother him at all. But you know, clearly, clearly, it did. Did you, you want to kind of address that in some way? You know, you're supposed to be not have feelings because you're a tough guy. Is that maybe how you felt people were reacting in some way? Yeah, I mean, yeah. So I was, I didn't really look at it like that. I just looked at it like, listen, if guys want to chirp me, and you know, if keyboard heroes want to chirp me on Twitter, I mean, that, I, I'm used to that stuff, and. Uh, I knew I was going to get chirped in Philly 100%. And I, someone from the bench, I don't know who it was, was like, you still fasting? Listen, it's it's one of those things where, you know, I took the high road, but 
I was I was just more mad. I wasn't I was mad of why he did it and why he said it. It wasn't and because I knew I couldn't do anything. That was a problem in my head and probably all your guys' heads. You want to react on something completely different and like be an idiot, but you can't. And you got to be careful. You have to choose your words. You have to, you know, choose your the writing you're going to say. And it's just what it wasn't worth it to me. And but yeah, I was just more pissed. All right, I was just like, why did he? It was just unnecessary. It was uncalled for. Yeah, I mean, what are the guys going to say? I'm soft for, you know, having someone shirt me. I don't care. I don't give a shit. That doesn't bother me. Like guys do all the time. And if they're going to shirt me, then guys are nice and. I, I guess we'll fight, but other than that. <laughs> yeah. So it's a little different in your mind if you're saying it to your face as opposed to just like on the broadcast to all these people watching and you don't even know what's being said, right? Yeah, it's yeah. basically like someone talking shit behind your back for no reason. You're just sitting there and someone records it and plays it for you. It's just like, it's just, it's just uncalled for. Like, listen, if me, if you guys were on the ice and you were like, oh, Maroon, you're fat. I get it. That's the only joke people say. Like, I get it. Like, Maroon, you're fat. Okay, I know. Like, okay, I get it. Like, come up with something different. You know what I mean? I get that all the time. It's the heat of the moment. Guys are chirping. Like, that's fine. But, like, when someone says that I've never met before is just chirping me for no reason and, like, telling him my weight. Actually, I came in at camp at 234. So he can... If he actually read the stat pack. What did he say you were? Did, 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 hey, did you chuckle a little bit when somebody from the Flyers asked if you were fasting? Or fasting? Nice fasting. Fasting? Yeah, I, I chuckled. That's a, I'm gonna, hey. like, like, like I said, though, Biz, I'm going to get it. Like, that, that's, that, that's going to happen, right? Like, and like I said, that stuff doesn't bother me. Like, but it's a guy that's on radio or national yeah. TV in front of whatever, millions of viewers or listeners – and he's just talking bad about someone for unnecessarily for a minute and 15 seconds. He's not even on the ice. The play went down, back, down, back, down. And he continues to keep going. And I was just like, I thought it was just unnecessary and wrong, in my opinion. And I, like I said, I wasn't trying to cancel him or fire him. That wasn't my point. It was just like, why? I want to know why he was saying that. Put you know what I mean? 2019. Like, what I was gonna say, 2019. He bought her. That you took I, his Stanley Cup ring away from him. I would say yep. send up some uh, Crest white strips to yeah. the to the press box for next. No, time it's like him. if you're saying he smokes weed, his jibs are like he smokes meth. His <laughs> jibs are disappearing and camels. Front. Yeah, they're crazy. So they're the, hey, hey, gritty though. Gritty had yeah. your back. There was a fun little sign he had going on. What? Did yeah, that say? was that was hilarious. By the way, what did it say? Tick. It's all thick. Right? Yeah. yeah. That's how, like, the, the girl was saying, like, you know, when they got the big good dunk a dunks. Ooh, yeah. ooh oh, okay. you thick, thick. girl. Oh, you thick, thick, girl. I got it right ooh, here. You thick, Patty. Thick, thick, what did it say? Thick, thick and tired of all this body shame. Yeah, I got it right here. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that was. And then our mascot had a, a sign, too. Yesterday, walking into the game, I'm like, all right, no. All right. And now, yeah. Yeah. now charity case. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but I, I agree you know with Wit, though. I, I think that the. The Blues Cup is probably, I mean, Jack would probably never admit it. I bet that's, like, a big reason for it because he's an over-the-top homo. Like, because what else, what other logical thing would, would could you come to it? Why he would he would do that, man? It, it makes no sense, but I don't yeah, know. Yeah, but, like, I don't know. I just feel like if us athletes did that and someone recorded it, we'd be in so much shit. You'd be playing for the you know Norfolk I mean? Admirals. Is that where their AHL no, team is now? you'd be playing for, like, the Neftahemic whatever in Russia. <laughs> What's up, boys? Fabs and Perron just got here. We're going to dinner tonight. Okay. Oh, where are you guys headed? Meat market. Oh, 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 oh. you're going to see some thickness there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's so good. What are the chances we got a uh, possible um, Alex Killer Kalorn and Patty Maroon Sandbagger, maybe? Oh, yeah. You guys are going to get rinsed. What are you talking <laughs> Have you not seen us playing lately? Have you been watching them? We're buzzing. Well, Killer's a stick, for one. I He's know, that's smoke. what we're worried about. He's he hits it really wet. far. He hits it really far. He's going to smoke wet, and I know I can just bury bit. So oh, I'm yeah, fine. wait till the cameras start rolling, Wait till buddy. we bring in Jack Edwards' caddy yeah, for Yeah, he'll us. be on fucking hole nine. <laughs> I'm going to use his tooth as a putter. A, with a megaphone. <laughs> <laughs> 
every Where green. Where are we playing? Every green. We're going to put them in a cage. Are you, guys down are you going no? away on All-Star break? Hey, we're going to put a, a crane and a cage on top so you can't get to them. <laughs> And he's going to have a megaphone. Yeah. Every time you backswing know, for a putt, he's going to be in your kitchen. Me, me and Killer are going to blow up teeth. Augusta. <laughs> you can get on Augusta? Yeah, I think we're going what? just for one day. Come on. Jesus, how? What's the hookup? Who's getting you on there? Tell us the hookup now uh, so it gets shriveled and you don't even get to go. I can't tell you. Exactly. Three Stanley Cups. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> All right, Patty, we've taken a lot of your time. Was there anything else you guys wanted to follow up with? Um, no. I, yeah, the uh, sandbagger. When are we playing? Yeah, well, well all-star break. Hopefully, if you guys are around, if you're, not, if you're not playing in the game, we'll uh, we'll get you out for a round. I'm coming to Tampa, too, February 21st to 25th for a golf tournament. So maybe we could do it around that. Then, then you're back playing, though. We need all-star break. Tell Kalorn not to go anywhere, and we'll come to you right at the beginning of it. What's her wager, though? we got to have a big wager here. Um, like we can't just play just for you know the TV and the YouTube and you know the the boys clicks here. We got to make it very very interesting. Let's play for a jet ski. I'm not down for that. Okay. I would, I'm All right. Not, let's let's out. No. I'll play you I straight up for a that. jet ski. Yeah, because you're legit you the human Kenny Powers. <laughs> I will play you straight up for a jet okay, ski. Okay, motherfucker. Let's sure. go, baby. <laughs> Let's go. That's, that's I don't think Biz realizes deal. he's playing for like ten grand. That, yeah. that might change the entire. Oh, we didn't say get, he's going to get a deal. I'm he's going to get a used one for him. Yeah, exactly. I'm going to be on Facebook Marketplace getting you an absolute <laughs> hunk of shit. If you, if we, but there ain't no way we're losing that one, buddy. I'm telling wow. you, man. Once the cameras start rolling, it's it's a, it's a game changer. Hey, you should you should use uh, Stammer's new putter. What did they get him? They get him a belly putter. Stammer's good too. Yeah, he's really good. Stammer's a stick. Who's too. better, Stammer and, uh, or Kalorn? If they're playing for ten G's, eighteen hole match. Hey, send me uh, Edwards. If you ask Stammer, Stammer says Killer's never beaten him. Wow. Hayden Fleury. Hayden Fleury's a stick. Hayden Fleury is, yeah, but he's, he's, he's he has, he doesn't have the the name yet to take on the sandbaggers. <laughs> hey, I know how we're gonna get back at Jack. Send me his number. I'm gonna send him a picture of my horn. I'm gonna send him a dick pic. We'll get him back. <laughs> I'll ruin his. I'll fe- ruin his year. Federal crime to get revenge. <laughs> All of a sudden, there's a <laughs> face is getting dragged out of the barstool offices <laughs> in handcuffs. Oh, oh Patty, Jesus. dude, it's good catching up with you. Um, All right, jet ski, you J- too, jet ski, and tell Kalorn like first day of All Star break, we'll come to you, because then we're going okay. to Florida for the to cover the game, unless you make the All Star games, huh? Hey, and then we hey when you're when you finally retire in what 15 years after you have 10 Stanley Cups. <laughs> We should do during the All Star break. We should do an all plugs game where we do, we bring in all the best fourth liners from around the league and maybe some past like fighters and grinders and stuff like that. Wouldn't that be fun? That would be hilarious. Yeah, meet and greets with the fans, and finally we'd be able to get some fucking ice time out there. <laughs> no kidding. You're we'll make you honor, honorary captain of the first ever one. <laughs> hey, quickly! I think that would be sick. I think that would be unbelievable. That Brian McGratton would get an invite. Yeah, for Jody sure. Shelley. Cam, would, who else? Cam would you, Jansen for sure. Oh my God, that oh, guy. Yeah, he'll he's run someone mute. over. Uh, Vital, he would have to come. Yeah, he's in there. He's the locker room DJ. The most well-spoken fourth liner ever. Um, is Worm the Perry Corey Perry still like the most superstitious guy going? Oh yeah, he's the yeah. worst. It's crazy, hey? Eh? Like at the at the when in the pregame clock, like right when it changes, he does every single thing. Depending on it's, that, everything's everything's timed. Oh, he's nuts. Crazy. He's nuts. It's insane. Twelve hundred games the other night. That's right. Yeah, he. Hit, uh, I, I think he's a Hall of Famer, but uh, uh, yeah, but Biz. <laughs> but everyone, you're, a in, hall the, of you're in the Hall of Fame. Hayden me, Fleury's fact. already in the Hall of yeah, Fame. If you ask Biz, f- first ballot. Um, but his stretch routine, he takes really good care of his body as far as how long he warms up. And, and uh, what, what, what do you say that when you make your body not limber, but you're asking the wrong guy? Okay, I'm sorry. Right. Pliability? Pliability, pliability, pliability. A lot of syllables. Um, all right, yeah, Patty. He, he he stretches. He's he's a he's a loose man out there. All right. Well, um, listen. Hell of a guy. Four time Chicklets guest. Gonna get dummied in a sandbagger, but we love you. And, um, man, don't worry. If you're a little bigger, it's okay. It's okay. No. It is. You enjoy dinner tonight and have dessert. A little cushion for the pushing, baby. <laughs> <laughs> See you, big Rick. So, so Love fun. you, Rick. See you, Patty. 
All right, guys, I got to talk to you about Shopify real quick. It's time to knock that new business idea out of the park with Shopify, the all-in-one commerce platform to start, run, and grow your own business. Forget the off-season work. Shopify makes it simple to sell to anyone from anywhere, whether you're selling warm-ups or wall hangers. It's time to start selling with Shopify and join the platform simplifying commerce for millions of businesses worldwide. With Shopify, you'll customize your online store to your brand, discover new customers, and build relationships that create diehard fans. That's the most important thing. Shopify fields all the sales channels to grow a winning business from an in-person POS system to an all-in-one e-commerce platform, even across social media platforms like TikTok, Facebook, and Instagram. And thanks to 24-7 support and free on-demand business courses, Shopify is your team every step of the way. This is a no-brainer. When you're ready to take your winning idea to the world, team up with Shopify, the commerce platform powering millions of businesses down the street and around the globe. Try out Shopify for free today and start selling anywhere. Sign up for free your free trial at shopify.com slash chicklets, all lowercase letters. Go to shopify.com slash chicklets to start selling online today. Shopify.com slash chicklets. Big thanks to Patty for jumping on with us, man. I'm glad he come on and gave us side of the story, bitch. You know, it's a sh- you know, shitty thing. Nobody wants to be put in that position. And, you know, I'm glad, like you said, something good come out of it. They raised over 50 grand for uh, Tampa Bay Thrive, so... And that money is going to keep going up with the attention they've drawn to it. So what a spin zone by Patty. And listen, I get what he means by firing something off right away and how it can do no good, where essentially there's more harm being done. So uh, good for him for taking a couple deep breaths and, and not hitting the send button because I would imagine there was some pretty well, interesting – Well, he texted Grinelli. He would, if, he, if he decided to tweet when he texted you, he'd probably be kicked out of the league. <laughs> if he listened to me, I was like, do it. We got your back. Wait, we'll get him. Hit him with a tweet. Columbus yeah, well, is the best city in the world. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's what it would have got him kicked out of the league. <laughs> Biz, team we haven't talked about enough lately. We mentioned them here and there. Seattle Kraken. Holy shit. They look for real. Despite Saturday's loss to Florida, team went 10-1-1 in November, 15-6-3, currently four points back of Vegas with two games in hand. Uh, only six teams in the league have more goals than them. I'd say free agent signee Barkowski has been huge. 25 points in 24 games. Matty Benet is unbelievable. Oh, leading rookies in points and goals. And Martin Jones, I mean, that's a signing a lot of people kind of snick it at at the beginning of the year. And he's been their savior so far. Philip Grubauer has been injured. Martin Jones, 12-4-2. I mean, a 2-9-0, 8-9-3. Probably not the best numbers, but he's getting the win. So it really doesn't matter in that regard. Uh, what's your take on him? You've seen well, a lot of it's, them. I mean, it's just a magical story right now. And I guess I'll start it off with... We had him on the TNT broadcast early in the season, and you know I always bounce things off talk, and I'm like, what are you seeing from these guys? Like They're not that exciting to watch. They were really boring last year, and he goes, they don't really have an identity. And it seems as if though partway through that game, just something clicked, and since then they've been on this run. Now, I think that – shout out to Hackstall, because I didn't really – you know he was in Philly, didn't really have much success there, and you thought maybe this is the type of guy who is uh, – what do you call them, sacrificial lamb? where you almost want the team to do bad in the first couple of years. You don't want to maybe bring in that that coach that's going to finally get them done when they get these pieces that they're trying to acquire, whether it was through the expansion draft or the the, the, the actual draft. And he just has these this group playing. And, and you know, I always go back to what Kobe Armstrong said about talking to Eberle, how he said this is the deepest team he's ever played on. But when Hackstall decided to, to stay firm on the situation with Shane Wright, I think that that – sent a message throughout the group saying, listen, we're not just going to insert people and we're not playing for the future right now. We're playing for right now and didn't really give up that spot. Now, this is that's not shitting on Shane, right? I'm really happy that he was able to go down to the American Hockey League and get some reps in there and also get some practice reps at the NHL level. But once again, that sent a message to the group. And then since then, it's just been all four lines producing offense. I feel like their, their D are a little bit overlooked but also help join that offense? Do they give up a, a lot of goals as well? But who gives a fuck, man? Exciting hockey to watch. The Martin Jones story is uh, great as well because after his little stint in San Jose when they ended up going to the finals and losing to Pittsburgh the one year, I feel like he really fizzled off. And you know, I didn't know really how much more time he had in the National Hockey League given with what his production was. But you see what he's been able to do there and revive his career. And I feel, think he's really thriving in this situation. Now, of course, Grubauer is 
technically their number one. I think he's with injuries. He's he's been a sideline to only playing what six games so far, yes. but overall the Burakovsky deal. I, I, he's leading their team right now. Nine goals. Uh, what is it? Twenty six points. So overall, this team is just kicking high. Th- flying offense and and Whit, I'll throw it over to you this Matty Beneers is an electric factory to watch he's a water bug out there uh, maybe a little bit undersized but his skating makes up for it yeah I talked to Ebbs a little bit Jordan Everly who's having a great year there and he just mentioned we're so deep up front we have four lines that can score and you think back to last year I think more than anything, they, they really could not get a save. And and we talked last year a lot about, like, the goaltending was such a big issue that you can't get any momentum. If you win games, it's like, it feels like, oh, we're lucky because we still didn't get any saves. And it's just hard to kind of grow as a team when the goaltending is really bad. It's just a fact. And this year it's been different. Martin Jones, like you just mentioned, but um, having four lines and the other guy that I was – wanted to bring up that wasn't there last year for most of the season is Tanev because he ended up I think he tore his ACL and he only played around 30 games like that's another guy you just get in the lineup and you stay him healthy he's a motor and what do they call him again turbo turbo it's non-stop it's physicality it's a guy who can kind of change a line he's on so when you miss him for two quarters two thirds of this two quarters two thirds of the (laughs) season last year it's just tough to to come back from that so having four lines I also think Justin Schultz has been a a pretty good addition I mean he's a Stanley Cup champion he's produced offensively with Vince Dunn and yeah him and Vince Dunn I don't think are known as like shutdown defenders and that's maybe why their defense is a little questionable but just being able to add to the offense creates more with those four lines that can score so uh, it's a great story and in terms of Beniers Massachusetts kid and just kind of one of those dudes that apparently has never had a bad day in his life. <laughs> like, works his balls. You know, like Trevor me. Trevor like me. Massachusetts guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Great attitudes. <laughs> so, he, so he's just uh, he's, he's a pleasure to be around, everyone says. Just loves being at the rink. Loves the game. And is lighting it up. So it's a great story. I'd love to catch a game there. I don't know. Have you guys heard? Is the crowd pretty electric? Oh, no. Oh, okay. On TV, but it seems pretty good. It, it looked very boring last year, and I was yeah. questioning it. But now that they're winning, they scored that OT winner. Well, Beneers did. Yeah. Seven seconds after the puck drop in overtime, they were down 2 nothing to the Washington Capitals. Mm-hmm. We keep talking about all these blown leads and what's going on, and he scores that goal. That building looks electric. We don't have a trip planned right now, but I want to get there before the end of the season, especially if this run continues. Save it for the playoffs. Right. And if we're going to go to Seattle and then the playoffs, I Knock on wood. Perfect let's, hope, let's hope they make it. Uh, Shane Wright was called up on Monday, and they did announce he's going to be in the lineup tonight versus Montreal. So, so this is interesting. Get that stare down ready. Oh, for anyone baby. who doesn't know, he went down to Coachella Valley. He had five games, four goals. He looked phenomenal. Took down Kendall Jenner. Yep, easy, <laughs> easy. Uh, uh, no questions asked. And and now he's up. He's up. So people thought he'd be there until World Juniors. Well, maybe now he's not even going to World Juniors. Nobody can get an answer. But don't bring him up and play him six minutes. You can't do it. He's got some confidence right now, so if that's the plan, I really don't understand what they're thinking because he can't play anymore in the AHL, unfortunately. It was the five-game limit based on the injury or rehab, but you can't you can't go back to what was happening before. So now that he does have confidence and he got to play, I hope the kid doesn't play for four or five minutes and sit on the bench the whole game. Hey, let's go right now. The spike game prediction. What do you got? I say he gets— Six minutes, zero, zero, zero. No, across no. The board. I say 11 minutes, one and one. Really? But first it's, NHL it's, goal tonight? Yeah, first NHL goal tonight, and then you, you look back to going down and getting your reps and getting your confidence it back. It is crazy. I mean, the first couple games, you had a, or I think the first three, four games, you had three, four goals. All of a sudden, you're getting your touches on the half wall. You're playing the peep. So all that confidence and ice time he's going to come back up with. I'm sure the boys are going to be revved up. You know he's going to have money on the board for the spike game, and I hope he shoves it up the Canadians hoop. Nothing against the Canadians, but this year has been the year of the spike game. Okay, we saw it with Jack Eichel in Buffalo. We saw it with Kirby Dock in Chicago. And we're now going to see so it now with Shane he, Wright. So it's a spite against his own team? No, the spite game because no, because when he was drafted, you know the story, the backstory. Oh, yes. my God, I didn't, know, I didn't hear so, you say yeah, they the were stare playing down, Montreal. The stare down. playing Montreal. Oh, my it's, God. It's like I it's been, sorry I didn't it's, hear you say they are playing it, Montreal. It's like the Wizard of Oz has, has been behind the scenes, a.k.a. Gary Bettman, who gave them the first overall pick instead of the Coyotes this year. Suck on that, Gary. It's like he completely organized this to all come down to tonight. Okay. All right, what's your prediction on spike game number three of the season? Uh, right, we'll get uh, 10 minutes, 22 seconds of ice time, one assist, and a plus two. Wow. Okay. 
What about you, G? We'll let you get in on the mix. Uh, Columbus is going to be the oh, best yeah. in the country. Yeah. Uh. I'm going to say two goals. What? Wow. I'm going to say You're two goals. You're on crack. We'll see. You're, You're on crack. Cuckoo. You guys are cuckoo. We'll see. Uh, that wasn't the only wild game that they were involved with. How about the 9-8 overtime win over the Kings? That felt straight out of the 1980s. Gave Seattle their sixth win in a row. Martin Jones became the first goalie in 30 years to win a game after giving up eight goals. 14 players had a multi-point night. Six goals within the first 10 minutes of the second period. That was, I mean, I know the coaches hated it. Maybe the most entertaining game of the year. I went so to far. I went to bed because we had TNT the next night. I was trying to get some rest. Liam McHugh was telling me he goes most insane game. I was up to one o'clock watching it. I could not turn it off. Um, so much insanity. In fact, it got a guy sent down on waivers. <laughs> I was going to say this one, s- Cal Pierce is like that game sucked. <laughs> yeah, that's a, that's a nightmare performance for him. Ra. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, next day Kings waived uh, goalie Cal Peterson. I think. They knew no one was going to pick him up at that contract. He has first year of a three-year, $15 million extension. They sent him down to AHL Ontario. He had given up four goals on 16 shots in 37 minutes in that aforementioned game. He's 28 years old, 5-3-2 and two this year with a 3-7-5 goals against 8-6-8 save percentage. I mean, he got this deal just a year ago. Did something fall apart? Was this a bad deal by Blake? Biz, what do you, like, what do you think of the situation Listen, here? You, like, sometimes goalies just need to go down and get a reset. You know, they got to work with their goalie coach and just really start from scratch. You know, I, I, I just looked at the stat line. He's played two games there since he's been sent down. And he's got some great numbers, like a 950 save percentage and below a, a two uh, goals against average. So, when you know when he came out of Notre Dame, he was highly touted. And at the time, Mike Stuthers was still coaching with the Ontario Reign, and I was like, hey, you know, who are the guys to look out for? And he goes, this Peterson guy is fucking nasty and net. And he had a great, great, uh, uh, you know, two, three years or whatever he spent with Ontario. Eventually, gets called up, and it seemed like the idea was, you know, he was gonna be the backup at start to start then he was probably going to split time with Jonathan Quick who was on the back nine of his career and then eventually take over as a starter well I would say that Jonathan Quick had a really really good season last year and didn't want to give up that net and I thought that Peterson was also pretty solid but it seems like he's never really been able to take that next step and solidify that starting position and it's it's such a it's such a change already because you have to get in that mental state night overnight and if it doesn't maybe come naturally at first you you have to find a way to f- figure it out and and work with somebody to put yourself in that mind frame to be an NHL starting goalie 65 nights of the year so uh, I wish him the best. I heard he's a great guy. He's very well liked, and sometimes you just got to go hit the reset button in the minors to, to yeah. get back to where you were. It's not a. It, this is not a, a a thing that's like final either. I mean, it's like Rob Blake talked about needing to just go down there, and I think Bill Ranford's the goaltending coach and figure things out and gain some confidence. And I'll say, I I didn't make the team out of training camp my second year pro, but it was the first year I was playing with an NHL season. I went down, I had a great start in the AHL. It's a little different than getting sent down, but I've never, I was never in my career as confident as I was when I got called up. It's, it's, I, I'll never forget it. Now, granted, the first night I was called up, I was on the five on three with Mario, Sid, Recky, and Gonchar in Jersey, dummied them. Thanks for coming, had an assist. But I'll just say, you have so much confidence from lighting it up down there that you don't really think that you're at the other level. You think about it and you appreciate it, but you're still confident once you're on the ice. So hopefully that happens for him. It's also a little bit of a shot. Or I would think the players on L.A. would take it as a little bit of a shot and kind of like, we got to wake up ourselves. Because for a team last year who pretty much thrived on discipline and structure, and you saw them almost beating Edmonton in the first round of like constantly shutting down high-scoring areas. And Quick was great, no doubt. But the team was tough to play against, and they've just not looked that way this year. It's been, it's been inconsistent play, and it hasn't been a team that's like figured out defensively how they want to play every game. So the goalie ends up kind of being on the short end of the stick. Quick's numbers aren't great either. So you could, you could argue, well, is it the goaltending or is it the team? It's probably a little bit of both. Well, it's, it's bizarre, too, because all those young studs that they have, the, the Velardis, the, the Derzies, the Quinton Byfields, those guys are a year older coming in, more experienced. You lost Doughty uh, for the back half of the season last year, 
So you're adding him. Uh, you go out and you sign Fiala. This team should be who's better. Who's playing well. Who's playing great, but this team should be better than yeah. last year. And I don't think it's fair to just blame goaltending. So overall, this team needs a kick in the arse. But uh, that, uh, that they had the old uh, the the dreaded um, meeting after the nine eight loss where it was just Rob Blake. I think he was the only one addressing the team. Oh jeez! And when you got the GM, I, I was a I was a part of some of those. I was a part of a lot of those where the GM comes down, and it is just a nightmare because you know you have disappointed the entire fan base, the entire management group, the head coach, and it's like we really got to figure things out. Usually the practice right after that meeting is about as high-paced and as, as intense as you'll find. So we'll see if, if the Canes can figure it out, but it's, it's been super inconsistent so far. And that's a weak division too. Pacific? Well, There's it's no... actually not as weak as you think with Seattle playing this well and and Edmonton's picking it up. Don't sleep on them. Your flames stink. But other than that, I mean, there's there's this it's not the best division in the league, but it's not as bad as you're saying. Yeah, Vegas yeah. looks good. Yeah, exactly. Well, I was well, I mean, I guess with uh, with San Jose, I didn't think it was going to be good. Anaheim, those are easy points. You mentioned Anaheim's horrible. Horrible. Mm. Holy shit. All right, guys. I got to talk to you about game time. What a way to see a concert, a game, a show. Game time is the best in the business. If you want to see any single game this season, you need game time. It's the ticketing app that makes it easier than ever to score the best deals on tickets to sports, concerts, and shows. And they guarantee the lowest price. If you haven't given game time a shot yet, I really don't know what you're waiting for. They've made it so easy for us to get into all these different games, whether it's NFL, NHL, or baseball. You guys are going to love this app. We've had tons of bars, Barstool fans using it, hitting us up on social about the great deals they are getting. And we've been using GameTime all year. Download the GameTime app, go to the account tab to create a login, and redeem code CHICKLETS for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Download GameTime. Last-minute tickets, lowest price, guaranteed. Well, another team scuffling along a little bit, Biz. The Rangers. Cool. They got biffed 5-2 Saturday at home by the lowly Chicago Blackhawks. The Rangers, I'm sorry, the Rags have won just one of their last six games and look like a shadow of the team that put up 110 points last season en route to the Eastern Conference Finals. In that Hawks game, Jacob Truba laid out another one of his patented uh, borderline legal hits, this time on Andreas Evadesiu. Pretty fucking nasty hit. I thought he was going to at least get a call from the Department of Player Safety. Didn't happen. Did you think it was worthy of something, or was it a... It Just was like, it, it was a vicious hit. I mean, I don't I, I don't really like to comment on that stuff anymore. If the yeah. league wants to take it into their hands, mm -hmm. I will say that there was a, a a point in time, three, four, maybe five years ago, where I felt the NHL was moving back to where are moving back, getting to be too soft. Where I feel like the, it's been reignited with big hits. You saw Darlene throw a monster one the other night. Uh, more fights. I like hockey the aggressive way. Uh, so I would lean towards no, but Anthony Cio was not happy about it, and he had some very strong words after the game, R.A. Absolutely. He said, uh, that guy is known for hitting high, not really worrying about the puck is out there and almost trying to hurt people. That's his game. That's what he does. He's an $8 million man with zero goals, so he has to figure out how to do something when making that much. If you can't help the team, I guess you try to hurt guys on the other team. Some very pointed words. Well, I mean, hey, if you can if you can lay big legal hits and you know guys end up going down, it's you know it's within the rules of the game. But talking about the Rangers, oh, I I said it last year and I was criticized. I had Rangers fans coming at me, so I just went back right at them, and they don't like it. And when I tell them exactly what their team is, they play uh, they play East West hockey. They give up a shit ton of high danger scoring chances. They slap lipstick on a pig with a goal a goaltender who won the Vesna last year. And this year he doesn't seem to have that same horseshoe stuck up his ass. And he tends to be getting a little bit exposed by these high danger scoring chances. So much so at MSG in their own building, Devils fans chanting Igor Igor Wit. To reemphasize a point you made probably about four to six weeks ago in the fact that Sorokin is a better Russian goaltender. I, I, I said that what Shesterkin has accomplished is amazing. Last season was one of the greatest seasons yeah, a goaltender has ever had. But you can't repeat that. It's like Kreider trying to repeat the 50 goals. I mentioned this last week, but... It was only a matter of time until Shesterkin came back to earth. Can he still be one of the best and win more Veznas? Yes, but like last season's not going to happen two years in a row. 
And my thing about Sorokin is he's bigger, he's stronger, he's probably built for the NHL a little bit more in terms of size, and he looks easily, to me, as a front runner for the Vesna right now. So I, I'll say this about the Rangers. It was supposed to be this special season, and Truba got named the captain, and I, I, I know he's battling an injury. It's been made public that he's got this upper body injury that happened during training camp. So who knows if, you know, if he should even be playing, but he's playing horrible. And you feel bad for a guy. It's, you know, you get named captain, you have this huge contract, you get all the pressure in the world after this amazing season, and right now it's like nothing's going right for him. He was playing with, uh, what did I say before the year? I think him and Keandre Miller were the pair that played the most out of the entire league together. They're not, he's, he played with Zach Jones on the third pair last game. I think he's been, I read here, he's been on the ice for, uh, I want to say in 27, 25 games, 27 even strength goals against. And the team's only given up, I think, 54. He's been on the ice for half the goals against. That sounds like strength. my stretch before it's, they it, sent me over yeah. to play wing. <laughs> so it's like, this team is... Uh, it's a pretty average team. I like saying mid. That's my word. I'm like the young guys now. I like the team's mid. It's a mid team. I, I, I mean, they, I don't really know what else to say besides that they better hope that they somehow can get Patrick Kane in a trade. And they do have the, the cap room opened up with the Reeves deal. But Patrick Kane just played against them and was probably like, why would I go to this team? They're not winning shit. I want to go to a team that can win the cup. I mean, they do hold all the cards. They're going to decide where he wants to go the exact same way Giroud did with the same exact agent in, in Pat um, Bersan. So I, I, I feel I feel bad for Truba, especially battling injury. And you got to give him credit. He's there. He's answering questions to the media. He's doing his job and being a captain. And he stepped up and he fought Kachuk with an injury. But, man, it's, it's, it's tough going right now for that entire team. And a bunch of guys who had career years that kind of more than likely just weren't going to be able to repeat it. And uh, before we get to that, uh, the, the, the two captains going out at center ice, which was an awesome scene, uh, one thing that New Jersey fans and, and a lot of other fans around the league for a, a, a fan base that is very obnoxious and loudly online is they're reminding them that these guys who they thought were going to take the next step – they're just not doing it. People are saying that Capo Caco's game has been a lot better. He's possessing the puck better, bringing it to the net. Second overall. Pick. Just does not have any finish. And, you know, it's just like, you know, horseshoes. What's what's the saying? Horseshoes. Close only counts in horseshoes, horseshoes and, and hand, hand grenades, grenades right? Mm. And he's not scoring many goals. Lafreniere has not taken that next Bosh. step either. So you, you get this third line who had this magical run in playoffs who's not really contributing the way that they did. Uh, the team looks flat. Larry Brooks had some comments about him. But even the top dogs like yeah they might be getting their cookies here and there but overall for what they're giving up defensively and how they're opening up the game the east west game as i say they don't like to play very north south hard smash mouth type of hockey they're just not having that same magic they had last year in, in a sense of exchanging these chances and getting them stopped at one and, and then going in at the other we all knew that Kreider wasn't going to score 50 again that was a magical what do you have fucking 28 on the power play for crying out loud it just they ain't going in like they were last year, and right now they are in trouble. We talked last week about a potential coaching change. Um, I think some of the frustration from the fan base is maybe in the press conferences there don't doesn't seem to be a lot of answers. It just seems to be regurgitating. I don't think they have many answers. Just regurgitating the same thing. So, I I personally think that with no structure in place or or not much of a structure in place. They're not going to be able to figure this out. Right now, they're just treading water, R.A., and if they don't figure it out quick with that division and now the fact that New Jersey's in their division, right? Yes. yes. All of a sudden, they're the they're the front runner in the division. And the Islanders are ahead of them. And the Islanders are ahead of them. There's not much breathing room there in order to squeak in, so they got to figure out this problem. they got to figure it out quick. And I don't really, I can't really name any other problems they have right now other than Besides everybody's playing like shit. Mentioned. What was that? What besides, besides the forty we just mentioned? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Larry Bro uh, Larry Brooks wrote: uh, "Season has devolved into a joyless exercise for Rangers. Essentially, every one of them, including the coach, seems defeated. There's no spark. There's no life. There's no confidence. There's no belief. And I mean, and that's why Truba got off the ice after that fight and hum checkled his helmet. Yeah. He threw his helmet and he was screaming at the bench. It's like wake up, like." How many different times can you say it in the locker room? All right, I'll try to fight. I'll try to get the guys going this way. But 
I saw a bunch of Rangers fans tweeting like after that, like nobody did a thing. Like Panarin's floating around out there. It's just like like that tweet said from Larry Brooks. Like it's just kind of blah right now. Yeah. And the, these fans, are, they're idiots. They it, won't stand for it. They're morons. They'll probably uh, sucker punch a fan of the other team leaving the game. It's uh, it's very mid. As the kids are saying. You know what? Another reason the idiots is like, I call them the rags. I mean, fucking all the time. Okay, this one I'm glad you brought up. Go ahead. Okay. And they, they think I'm insulting their team. They cry. They literally fucking whine all the time. And I'm That's like, all I'm, they do online. And I'm like, well, you don't get it. I'm not, if I'm going to pick on your team, I'm, I'm going to be blunt and what fucking, you're going to know I'm going to. And they cry. And I'm like, I call them the fucking rags because when I was in college, the New York Post was fucking the closest paper we could get. And they called them the fucking rags in every headline. That's literally why I call them the rags, because the New York Post called them the fucking rags all the time in headlines. And it wasn't being derogatory. And these idiots are like, oh, you fucking making fun of our team. They're calling them. I'm like, no, I'm just calling them what the fucking local paper. I got a question for you. So they don't like is the it, nickname. Is it, is it on their Wikipedia page? Well, fuck Wikipedia. <laughs> well, 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 I'm asking, because no, that's, that's the official stamp of approval. I don't, I don't know. I didn't check Wikipedia, unless there was a you should, properly sourced you link. You should DM Larry <laughs> Brooks... And ask him if that's a that's an actual fact if if you, if you can call them the rags. Ah, oh, I mean, New York Post did forever. I don't know if they still do, but but anyways, is it the New, is, like is the New York Post a, a legitimate paper? Uh, it's debatable. But the point is, it's like I'm not doing it to fucking rank on you. It's it's like again, it was from a newspaper. That's where I got the nickname from. So anyways, well, but, but, but you are kind of ranking on them using it. You well, know it no. pisses them off. Well, because now, because it, they cry about it, so I'm not going to stop you using it. You I know, know I mean? but you can't say you're not using it. But I, but when I originally used it, I mean, fucking blogs from the last fifteen years. It wasn't. It was. That's what I called. It wasn't to fucking piss anybody off. So I'm not gonna. Because they're getting pissed. I'm not gonna stop using it because okay. it pisses them off. Okay. You dig? We should do a Twitter poll. I dig you. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so yeah, man, you, you do gotta wonder what is something gonna give soon. Whether we talked about Gallant, his coaching history. I mean, is it the roster? Is it last year an anomaly? What's Drury's role in all this? So a lot of questions remain. Um, and we'll pretty see hard to put it on the coach though, when when everybody's no. not playing no, very I, well. Yeah, I, I agree, but just. Is, you know, it is, yeah, it's just weird. He gets gassed in his third year with teams, correct? Is that is that's what's happened yeah. on every single team. So it's like, who knows? I, I'm not in the locker room, but it's not going to remain status quo the way it is much longer because they have a huge game tonight. So you're listening to this Tuesday where they play the Blues at MSG. Let's see how tonight goes. Well, they lost to Ottawa, and that's what we we're going to get oh, back oh, to. Oh. That's scrap. And, and wow. They, what a game by Brady. Here, here's another one the kids are saying. What do we got? When Matthew Kachuk came on, no cap. No cap, no, no cap, lie, right? No cap. That means no lie. Brady Kachuk, uh, biggest power forward in the game right now. He does it all, folks. He's having a monster year offensively, and that scrap was a throwback scrap. This wasn't the jersey jabs like old pussy busy boy would do because I was afraid to get punched in the square in the nose and break it again. These guys were chucking bombs at each other. I didn't know Truba could throw like that either. So that's, to me, more of that in the National Hockey League, more power forwards, and that's fucking bringing the business. And that night, OT winner for, for Brady Kachuk was the Gordie Howe hat trick. Uh, actually, no, he got the Gordie Howe hat trick when he tied the game with the goal he pulled. Okay. And then he got another goal uh, in overtime to win it. But no yeah, shit. Se- center ice fucking, it, it was like two, a boxing two match. Captains, two captains. Two captains going at it. Well, it, it's everyone immediately thinks to the, um, oh, actually, I guess LeCavier wasn't the captain then, right? When he fought again in the finals, Andrew Chuck was captain that year. So I, I, I don't know why I thought of them too. Be I guess LeCavier being a captain later on. But two captains squaring off is as good as it gets. Awesome fight, too. And that was actually true. He had three fights in two nights. He also fought uh, uh, Juju, uh, Kyra, Jujai, Kyra. Well, yeah, he Chicago knocked him out last, last year. year. So Kyra uh, had, had some payback he wanted to get on him, and, and, and Truba was willing to go him. Uh, also, I sent the, the clip of uh, Claude Giroux watching the fight from the bench. That was awesome. You know when you watch a fight, you kind yeah. of doing this stuff. So it was pretty cool to watch that. But going back to Brady, man, the, uh, his goal gives the Sens their third straight win. People were talking about DJ Smith not too long ago. Biz, I mean, the Sens were six points back of the wild card. Still got 58 games to play. Can they get back into the race? I think, that, well, we, I, we, say let's, no. let, I don't think, I, I, we talked about it before the year and saying that they were going to be fighting for that wild card spot, but their D is just so thin. Uh, I don't know when, when Sherratt's coming back. With Sanderson playing the way he is, obviously that's a massive help, but no, they're going to be on the outside looking in. And ever since, though, uh, Brady did stick up for DJ Smith, 
um, in his comments, basically saying, back off, man. There's there's more issues and fish to fry than, than our head coach right now. He has not only elevated his play, but the team has. So it's good to see. It's given some some Canadian market a, a objective life in them, and it, it'd be good to see them playing competitive games down the stretch and not be out of things by Christmas. It's kind of weird to see uh, Debrinkat. He's got six goals. It's like... And earlier in his career, he had 28 his rookie year. He went 41 the year after. The following year, his third year, he only had 18. Took a dump, yeah. He only had 18. So last year he had 41 in Chicago, and this year he has six. Like, I don't know if, if after he gets 41, for some reason he slows down a little bit, but they need him to get going because if he can get going while they're winning here and changing things up a little bit, then you never know. It's just so many teams in front of them, and it's going to be too hard with their start, I believe, and and. and they're going to lose more games, right? The D is the D's weak. But it's at least good to see them play some kind of upbeat hockey because DJ Smith, it is a coach you felt bad for a little bit. It seems like the guys love him and respect him, and he just couldn't get anything going with that team. Hey, uh, you know who's got cap space for Patrick Kane? The Ottawa Senators. Yeah, I'm sure he'd be going to Ottawa. Well, hey, man, maybe he wants to link playoffs. up with his boy DeBrinket and get him back in the score sheet because they had such good chemistry. And that team's on the up and up, so don't think – hey – don't shade my, uh, my my rumor, Mel. Uh, Cam Talbot playing well as late, too. You know, the Sens looking, I think, a lot more like we expected at the beginning of the year. Yeah, at least competitive. Yeah, exactly. Uh, Brady, 12 goals, 17 assists, 29 points in 24 games played. I, I think, like, they call his dad Big Walt. He's like Lil Walt, even though he's probably bigger than me. He plays just like his Monster. dad. Same style. It's, it's a fun. No cap, dog. No cap. No cap. A, a treat to watch him play. But how about this? Brady became the first player with the game-time goal in the final minute of regulation and then the game-winning goal in the final minute of OT since his brother Matthew did it with Calgary October 31st, 2019 against the Predators. And Matthew returned to Calgary for the first time since the big trade. I will he got a nice remember. reception. I mean, you know, I like what they you. did. They gave him the nice one early and then they booed, booed him the, the rest of the evening. After, yeah. If you yeah. will remember me. Sarah McLaughlin. Right. I'm, thinking of, now I'm thinking of sick puppies and kittens right I now. I know. Don't do it to me. Bill, That's the him. montage they put on when Bill a guy does. comes back. I will remember. That's what they put on there? Uh, I believe they played that when Wayne Gretzky retired and he came out and was waving no, it. At, that was Tina Turner, Simply the Best. You're simply Good the call, best. I th- hey, fuck, I, well, this is the Rumor Boy podcast. I, I'm sure there was more than one song played. It was like probably. I'm f- sure it wasn't that Debbie Downer, yeah. Sarah McLaughlin fucking adopt a three legged dog. Yeah, fucking Tina Turner, baby. But it dum dum. Great voice, though. Great voice. Thank you. Who, Sarah uh, McLaughlin? No, Biz. I think Biz has a fantastic voice. I think voice. I have an extremely underrated voice. I agree. I could actually sing uh, Christmas carols. Really? Yeah, I'm good at Christmas carols. Uh, another former Flame who returned uh, back to Calgary, Sean Monaghan, did it with the uh, Canadians, and he was he got kind of a little emotional in, in the uh, press before the game, talking about his time there, and he got, a, like I think, a minute-long standing ovation. Obviously, he was there a lot longer than... Then uh, Matthew, did you get a chance to see that? See that? Yeah, cool it, stuff, man. Uh, unfortunate how it all ended with the, with the injuries last year, but uh, Daryl Sutter had some very positive yeah. comments. Said, you know, just like how how good of a, a, a guy he is. Salter the earth, human being. Came, brought his work boots every day. You know, Daryl's loving that. And and man, Canadians got a good one and a good guy to teach those young guys in the locker room too. So a lot of value and a lot of game left in, in Monty. Um, I. I... I think it was hard for him probably kind of realizing how it ended maybe a little bit. Or I, I could be completely wrong. Maybe he's thinking back to all those great years he had, the special memories, Hockey Night in Canada, and all the stuff that goes along with being a, a flame that he probably enjoyed watching that video. But y- you could tell his teammates love him, and, and it is cool to get that when you return home. Uh, I think that he was drafted there. He'll always remember there. So the video was was cool for me to see because uh, when guys get emotional, I think it's cool because you think back to what it took for players to get to certain spots in their career, and it's really hard not to get emotional. So I understand. Another Flames clip this week. Goalie had Jacob Markstrom. I just suck at hockey right now. You can't get much more blunt than that. I mean, you got to appreciate the honesty, but we got to keep going here. Another goalie in the news this week. Bennington, our buddy Jordan Bennington. I love this guy. I mean, I love what's Craig going on. Well, well, Chief doesn't exactly yeah. love him right now. Listen, I'm in the Chase. entertainment business. What's happening with Jordan Bennington? And and it, it, I'm in it, the winning business. It, it, well, yeah, and it probably it probably sucks for him because the reason he's doing it is because he's frustrated with maybe the way yeah. he's playing. Uh, he tried to hit Jordan Stahl <laughs> earlier insane. in the week and got bundled. And then, he, and then he ends up doing it to, to Jason Zucker. And, I mean, if you want to read Berube's post-game quotes, I'll just say this. Every 
four to six weeks. I keep saying the four to six week window. But there's a clip that shows up online with this guy being a complete donkey on the ice, after, whether it's a scrum. Last year, he swung his sick at Nazem Kadri. Uh, that was during the regular season. We're not going to even get into playoffs and water bottle gate and how that all went down. So this guy is just a, a walking uh, a walking viral clip, man. But, uh, gee, why don't you play the Barubi clip? Was this a case of Jordan just getting frustrated there? Yeah, time? yeah, yeah, pretty much, and it's got to stop. Mm-hmm. Would you, would you that like doesn't help anything. Pardon me? It doesn't help anything. Yeah, would you like him to just to be more yeah, even just, keel? Yeah, just play goal, stop the puck. Yeah. So that's a coach that you can tell is just fed up. He's fed up, and and it's like the the age old line from coaches is just stop the fucking puck, just play goalie. It's a lot of times kind of um, meant for goalies who might leave the crease to go play the puck. Just stay in the net and stop the puck. And what you say is true. I think Bennington. Now, granted, he won six in a row at one point when they got out of the skid, didn't he? And and now it's like it's kind of turned back again where he's losing. And you make a really good point. I think for him to get out of it and as pissed off as he gets, he ends up like getting physical. He almost wants to fight someone. But the Zucker clip that was kind of. You know, he throws the he throws the glove kind of behind, hits Zucker in the face. He goes down, maybe a little bit of a dive. I don't know. It did probably shock him enough where he goes flying into the boards. But then he's yelling at Zucker as he's as he's skating to the boards. I think he leaves that game. He got a 10-minute major for inciting, correct? Inciting. I never... Inciting a riot, bitch. And he's, like, <laughs> yelling at the Penguins bench, who's, what are they, up 4-5-1 or five, one at the time? It's just like, as the coach of the Blues, I can see Berube being like, enough's enough. Like, if, if, if hopefully you play great. We've seen you play great. If you play bad, let's stay out of this shit because it looks even more ridiculous when you're losing. Uh, I, I would – I don't know the last time – What uh, an interesting uh, cat uh, he is. When, Remember when, interviewing him? When, oh, when's yeah. the last time you could label an NHL goalie a rat? Uh, Tim Tor- Thomas. Tim Thomas, I think nah. you could. What? I think you could. But Tim he, Thomas would bundle people when they'd come yeah, within two did, minutes of their crease. He, but yeah, he wasn't a rat. Not a rat. I'm I don't know. He's always slashing people. We'll put out a Twitter poll. I'm not letting you guys bully me into this one. Okay, well, we, sure. we don't need to bully you into it. It was just a stupid But take. I would say that... <laughs> but Columbus is top five city. I, I would say <laughs> that, that Bennington has established himself as an NHL rat, and I can't remember the last time an NHL goalie did so. And I'm not talking Ron Hextall. Ron Hextall would do that but then he would back it up by dropping the mitts Bennington seems to be antagonizing but you never see him th- throw down you know who talked a lot of shit from the bench is um, Martin Baron I think he does a lot of media now am I thinking of the right guy yeah yeah no, he, media. in Buffalo yeah 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 I think I've seen clips of him chirping guys from the bench so that's kind of a little ratty but I'm, I'm just trying to rack my brain it's a good call because I can name four instances in the last 12 months in which he's done something yeah. Going back to last regular season when he did the swick, stick swing on Kadri and wa- in the playoffs, mind you, you know his playoffs injured. is over and, and, and he's upset because he got injured yeah. from Kadri. You go to Water Bottle Gate with him chucking a water bottle right on the TNT broadcast, and now there's been a few instances this year. We just talked about two last week with with Jordan Stahl mm-hmm. and then of course with Pittsburgh. So I, I'm sure there's four or five other instances since he's been in the NHL. You can go back to his AHL days when he's doing it. Jordan Bennington, the rat king of NHL goaltenders. Yeah, friend of the program as well. Maybe he needs it to get going, Biz. I, I think yeah. of that, that old Will Ferrell skit on SNL as, as Neil Diamond. He's like, uh, this next song I wrote after I had killed the Drifty to get an erection. You know what I mean? Like he has to fucking do something crazy to get in that mode. I don't know. So. Pardon? You are a sick puppy, <laughs> Pardon? Buddy. No, you remember when Will Ferrell did Neil Diamond? No, I know. Story? And he's like basically like had to kill a Drifty to get an erection. It's like, in other words, you got to do some crazy that's shit to get to this like mental level. And it's like, that's what it reminded me of. No, that's a great. You actually, think I lo- think of. You know, the, the more I keep thinking about it. Yeah. I love the analogy. Thank you, buddy. Thank you. <laughs> He's hey, ne- hey, next thing you know, Bennington's gonna have a paint job with Will Farrow and a fucking homeless guy with a boner and shit. Or whatever he gets the picked yeah. up Ugh. something about Mary by Ben Stiller with well, a body. Bennington seems like the type of guy to fucking kill a homeless wow. man. That's how fucking crazy he is. Either way, we, we love too psycho much? goalies. Too much? Nah. Too much? Just go back and go and stop the puck. Uh, Biz, we got to do a, a weekly TNT roundup. You, you interviewed the Isa man, the Isa plan this week. He fucking gave you a great answer. He said he wanted to party with you too instead of doing yoga. Yeah, I don't think he's gonna party with me. I was banging on the the press box door to his office, and he and he wouldn't uh, he wouldn't answer it. But uh, Stevie Bong rips. It seemed like he wanted to talk hockey. I mean, when he's talking hockey, you're just drawn in. 
he uh, talk had brought up the a lot of the two and three goal uh, leads being blown, and he just talked about how the offense is created now and how much the game is changing. And uh, obviously, he's got a massive pulse on it, and uh, it's always good to be able to sit down with a hockey mind like that. And we've been fortunate with the TNT broadcast. We had Torts the week before. We got uh, we got Stevie Y. We're not going to roll the whole interview, but you can go check it out online. And then uh, later on that night, we had uh, Dion. Dion Dreisaitl, <laughs> double D, fucking so guy. So you're Wiz, he's yeah. Dion, right? He called me Wiz the first time he was on, and I and I, and I asked him about uh, Connor McDavid's hot tub again, and it doesn't seem like Connor's having the boys over. What do you make of that? Well, I, Leon looks like Todd from Wedding Crash. The painting was a gift, Todd. I'm keeping it. <laughs> Check out the picture. Uh, maybe memes can put them side by side. When you interviewed him, I was like, that's Todd. That quaff was something Legit. else. Cuddling in bed with Vince Vaughn, tying him up like a savage. So I would understand McDavid doesn't want to have a guy over his hot tub like that. So it's it's Leon. I mean, I don't know. I can't describe anything else. But I would I would imagine that they're spending time at his house. No, like he's not going to be the captain that doesn't invite anyone over. Apparently, he is. And next time we get McDavid on, if we do, he's if, if he's not yeah, question if he's not question shame me, I'm going to ask him about the hot tub and what temperature he keeps it at. Um, so back to Dion. Then I got the chance because we were doing rapid fire with him. He doesn't really answer that long. I asked him about that stick blade of his, and I asked if it had a nickname. He calls it the Burger Flipper. I wanted. <laughs> to, I said, "What about Barry? You know that uh, that meme that memes kept posting, just because it's so just a massive back <laughs> black blade. I figured why not call the thing Barry." So he was. Oh, the guy from uh, the uh, you know, guy you, from COVID that was like yeah, a part yeah. of every link. Every, every, every link, the, every the link, just a huge cock. I said, why don't you call it Barry? It's my twig, Lexington Steel. If you do, I, I, have we talked about his blade on this on this podcast before and how big it is? Definitely. We I don't have. even know. I asked him if it was it's legal. long and thick. L- long and thick. I mean, that long sounds so thick. interesting. No, huh? just long. And I wouldn't thick. know anything about long and thick. <laughs> Holy shit! I know skinny and short like the back of my hand. <laughs> <laughs> All righty. Uh, Vancouver forward Brock Besser. He was supposed to be scratched. I'm sorry, healthy scratch Saturday night versus Arizona. Uh, Coach Bruce Boudreau described that as tough love. Uh, he's got 14 points in 18 games, but not playing his best. Besser said it hurt, hurt very bad when he didn't see his name on the whiteboard that morning. It was hockey fights cancer night. Of course, he lost his dad back in May. Uh, but it turns out Dakota Joshua had a late injury leading to Besser going into the lineup. He scores the game tying goal in the third period. And the same night, Elliot Friedman reported that Canucks gave Besser's agent permission to talk to other teams about a potential trade. So so people were wondering, basically, A, why is the team sitting him if they're trying to shop him? You want to, you know, kind of showcase him a bit. And also, why would they sit him on Hockey Fights Cancer tonight, knowing the emotional connection he had with his dad and uh, to his credit, Bruce Boudreau said, hey, I didn't know it was Hockey Fights Cancer tonight. And that's not something a coach necessarily on his radar. Uh, but but the other part, the why why sit a guy if you're gonna have his agent look for a trade? Wouldn't you be better off like playing him? I know you don't want to get him hurt, but this is a situation where you kind of want to get the guys some ice, no? Yeah, you, you, yeah, you don't want to create any negative attention around him because in some cases maybe that would slip through the cracks where people were like, oh, maybe it's just the fit, right? Maybe it's not for a lack of effort. Uh, going back to the hockey fights cancer night, obviously that means a lot to Brock Besser. He actually took warm up in a jersey that has father's name on the back of it. Very emotional night for him as he scores the the tying goal for the Vancouver Canucks. Uh, he had an opportunity in overtime too. That would have sealed the deal on a very special night um but i have to back up bruce on this because you know when we were we were doing a broadcast a couple weeks ago and i forget what team was on it but they were having their specific hockey fights cancer night and i feel like they're they they spread them out all throughout the month of november and so for him to you know be managing the team and keep in 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 touch with all that other stuff that's going around Sometimes they'll slip through the cracks. So obviously the semantics, is that the word I'm looking for? The semantics of it all? I think that's correct. Is but that you're a, asking the wrong guy. But the, so far you're hammering yeah, this. The semantics of it all look horrible. The but optics. It's just, optics. The optics. The optics. That I, don't know, boy, I, I don't know where I got semantics. Uh, but but the optics of it all looked horrible, but I'm glad that he was able to get in the lineup because that would have just created more of a shitstorm around that fan base who was very hostile to begin with during these difficult times. Um, not to mention that the Horvat situation. Yeah. Like, he's not going back there, buddy. What at this? At this? Why would he? So, so there's been a major, major disconnect into what needs to be done for the Vancouver Canucks and what the owner wants for the Vancouver. Because the owner listens he, to the fans, right? He, 
I think the owner is con- he, he wants to win. He doesn't he doesn't believe in these rebuilds. And maybe when they were going through one partly, he was like, "All right, enough. Now we got to win." Where it's like, "Nah, nah, nah. That's how that's not how it works. You got to be shit for a period of time until the window opens and then you strike." AKA the New Jersey Devils who have now turned into a wagon and they have prospects up the yin yang and all these guys are young and locked into these deals. Anyway, I digress. Back to Vancouver. So at this point, it's like, why not get rid of Besser and maybe um, Horvat package deal, start getting some assets in return and actually start and bring this thing to the ground to, in order to bring it back up. When I say bring it to the ground, you still have some valuable pieces in there. You have Quinn Hughes, you have uh, Pedersen there, you have Demko. So you have one, one significant player in each position. Now continue to add these. There's no way Horvat's coming back. You have JT Miller, who you signed to that contract, who, I don't know, some some nights the body language, it's like he's, you know, he's frustrated. I feel like he might hate being there. He, I, he just resigned, so right, it's just like... just resigned, and it, how is a guy like that going to turn down that type of money? So it's just a very confusing organization yes. right now where there's a lot of turmoil. You don't know what's happening with the coach. In, in, in one breath, you hear some of the fans love Bruce Boudreaux, and in the other, the, the feeling around the room is they're just waiting for the day he ends up getting finally fired. So, And he's also under so much... He's doesn't have a contract so you throw the pressure in for the coach who's coaching game by game that his job's on the line which it pretty much is it adds this entire extra set of uh pressure and circumstances that this team's dealing with in terms of the coach individually feeling all this pressure let alone the team feeling it from the fans who are miserable also bringing up the fact that this team they didn't even have a good turnout they had a saturday night home game that was when Besser tied it up correct saturday night yeah against the coyotes yeah, it's like the, uh, 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 a, a game around December, a Saturday night, and it's like the crowd's like that. It's just an odd time to be a Canucks fan and player because there's so much confusion around so many different aspects of the club. And there's no other draw in town. They they don't got a basketball no. team. The Grizzlies want to go down to Seattle the, the, and watch the crack and yeah, win some games. Maybe that's where everybody's going. But going back to Brock Besser, I think that the feeling is, or at least in the past was, a great power play player who can put the puck in the back of the net, but sometimes five on five, it's just the the, the offensive production just isn't there. If if he's not happy, and hopefully he can find a way out of town, because I do think that his natural scoring ability can be used someone else somewhere else if put with the right players. I haven't even begun to think about where places that he could land. I'm sure Elliot Friedman has 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 dropped some potential uh, teams that would be interested who do have cap space. Because off the top of my head, I want to say Brock Besser's making six million a year. So I just got the thumbs up from Grinelli, and I am buzzing right now. Yeah, you are. You're um, feeling it. My yeah. semantics are buzzing right now for two more years too. For yeah. two more years. So not not a horrendous cap hit, with, especially with the cap going up, but. For maybe for a guy who hasn't been able to produce consistently five on five, a bit of a risk. Yeah, he's in the first year of a three year, a nineteen point nine five million dollar extension. Only twenty five years old. Yeah. So Still young. Six point six five speed. AAV. I mean, he's a four time twenty goal scorer. This might be a classic case of a guy who changes scenery. Could be the best thing that could ever happen to him. And, oh, at this point, yeah. I think I think he would just take off. And I don't know about scoring 30 or 40 somewhere else, but yeah. he would be so happy to get out yeah. of there right now. I, I don't th- even know the guy, and I can tell you. If he got traded, he'd be f- yeah. fucking thrilled. I, I'm not naming teams. I don't can't think of them off the top of my head, but there's shitload that he, perfect for top six. I mean, he's, he's I, I think Arizona skill. would be a perfect fit for him. Yeah. Ooh. He can start I, over. So they can take on the money. It's a place where he's a name, so he'll get people in the seats. I think it's a perfect and then fit there. And two years when okay. he's going to be UFA, they'll trade He can live with me. Definitely. He can live with me. Uh, one other note on Vancouver. Uh, goalie Thatcher Demko, we just mentioned him. He suffered a lower body injury while facing, did you see that barrage of Florida shots? Four shots in a row they took. Boom, boom, boom. He missed the last one. Uh, he's going to miss six weeks. It looked like it could have been much worse. So, uh, friend of the program, Thatcher, get well, man. We want to see you back out there. And uh, Boys, I think we should bring on Donor. Shane Doan. Love having this guy on. His third appearance on Chicklets. Just a, a, a great human being. Great guy. And we're going to talk to him about what he's been up to. Team Canada and Arizona. The new GM of Hockey Canada, Shane Doan. All right, guys. 
It's the wit dog here, and I want to talk to you about Peter Millar. When I'm golfing, which is often, which is oh so often because I love that great game, all I wear is Peter Millar. I wore it before I was ever a host, a co-host of the Spit and Chicklets podcast. Before the idea of Peter Millar ever being a sponsor was a twinkle in my eye. I'm telling you, it is the best gear going. And right now... Peter Millar is starting Peter Millar's Lava Wash Line. It's perfectly designed for everything from weekends on the couch to casual Sunday brunches. This is the type of gear you do not need to wear only on the golf course. It looks great at a bar. It looks great on a date. It looks great hanging with your buddies. It looks great doing anything. And I'm telling you, if you want to go play golf and then go out, you get to wear Peter Millar and do both. I really love it. I've loved the shirts. The actual, the quarter zips are amazing. They make great pants. Everything about every part of their company is top notch. I would not tell you this if I didn't believe it and stand for this company myself. Be sure to check out the full zip model at PeterMillar.com. You can shop the hoodies and the rest of the lava wash line right now. PeterMillar.com, the best stuff in the golf world. All right, it's been almost two years since we had this gentleman on the show, and it's great to welcome him back for his third appearance here on Spit and Chicklets, Arizona hockey legend and Team Canada GM, Shane Doan. Thanks so much for jumping on the Spit and Chicklets podcast with us. How you been, my friend? I am doing really well. Thanks so much for asking. It, uh, it's good to be back on here. I always enjoy talking to you guys. Why are you, why are you giggling like that when you're saying it? Because <laughs> <laughs> I laugh every time I, any time that I'm involved in this. It makes me laugh and I enjoy it. Because you don't know uh, what's coming at you. I don't. I don't. And it's that fun kind of excited feeling that you get to deal with. It's, well, it's great. He's well, reading off a card of what Biz told him to say when he joined the show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Donor. Well, first of all, congratulations, buddy. So I guess your next move w- with Hockey Canada is putting together the Spangler Cup team? Yeah, yeah. We're kind of getting that all kind of organized and going. Uh, we found our coaches and our assistant GMs and the support staff, so just kind of moving along keep and getting the players together now and it's it's coming together nice i'm surprised ra hasn't mentioned it yet claude julian's going to be the head coach of team canada for spangler cup right uh n- not this time he's actually over there coaching right now oh, okay. so that's why i didn't say it not- <laughs> oh okay that's why you kept your, your your hammer in your pants who's going to be the head coach because i know scott niedemeyer is going to be assistant right come on tell me i'm not wrong on that one no you're right on that Fucking one travis, right. green. travis oh, green that's right okay so but they're they're not. I mean, we haven't officially announced any of that stuff. So okay. So I shit. Should we just go backward? Maybe we'll bleep out the names and leave it up to to everybody guessing and speculating. If you knew, I'm guessing a lot of people know though. Yeah, because donor can't shut his big yap around Scott. So no, probably telling I, everybody. You know, it. What are you doing? Are you, are you kidding? <laughs> I think they. But maybe they have announced it. Someone said the other day they announced that I was a GM, and I didn't know that. So. <laughs> I don't know much about what's going on. So. Maybe they got to work on getting better press releases. <laughs> I think it's coming out like on the 12th or something like I've that. I've actually always been curious because that, that team is it's pro guys, occasionally AHL, but not often. Most of the time it's Canadian guys playing in Europe. Do you have to deal with calling these, you know, um, you know, presidents or whatever it is over there, the guys in charge of those teams, and, and getting the, them to agree to let the guy go for a couple of weeks? Like, how does it work getting in touch with all these different European clubs? Yeah, you get to. That's exactly what it is. What you you call up the GMs and the presidents of each club and kind of ask them, hey, over the over your guys' Christmas break, could we use this player, or that player? Most of the leagues don't let you do it. Really? Most of the leagues, are, yeah, it's. Like it's getting it's getting tougher and tougher because the leagues are all getting so competitive and they have the championship league or they have the champions league where they all play against each other. Some of the leagues really like it in with Team Canada asking because it promotes their leagues. So a couple of Finnish a couple of the Finnish teams have uh, have been really helpful. We got a kid from Finland that's it's going to help us and um, that plays over there because the Finnish is the Finnish league is sending a team. The Swedish league is sending a team, and so is the Czech league. So it's three; those three teams, plus Davos, Ombre, and Canada. So those are the six teams that are in it, and they rotates through. And uh, it's a great. I, I, have you guys ever been there? No, but I heard it's a time. It's unbelievable. Mm-hmm. It's incredible. Like it's, it's one of the, like. You know, like Grace Bay Beach in Turks and Caicos yeah, is like the nicest there. beach in the world. That's amazing, right? Mm-hmm. 
Mm -hmm. this is like the nicest chalet place in the world like it's like on that level it's incredible so it's so nice so it would it would be like an apres ski met oktoberfest met a hockey tournament yeah i'm not sure what the first two were but i know what the last one is. Ski is like after you go skiing where it's just like a everyone's got like a bougie basically like a dumb and dumber when he's handing out the yes. hundreds here you go here you go and those, the ious those yeah the ious that the, one's those, a ferrari th- th- those types of outfits and then Oktoberfest <laughs> yeah. because there's a lot of drinking going on during this during the spangler cup tournament isn't well, there with donors club he'll have guys being <laughs> pp whacked if they're out too late oh duels they'll be drinking the, z- the 0. 0.0 percent <laughs> <laughs> no, they have. So Davos is a small town. Like it's not a massive town. It's only about ten to twelve thousand people. It's not very big, but it is so well supported. And this tournament is crazy, and the fans really get into it. And the building that they play in is, they call it the Cathedral of Hockey because it's all made out of wood. Um, it's fascinating. The the structure of it's amazing. And they got a they got a skating rink right on the outside that's right at the base of the mountain so that you can go outside and people are skating all the time outside and then uh, there's probably about 25,000 to 30,000 people come into the town for the tournament and and then 3 weeks later they have the World Economic Summit at Davos so and the World Economic Summit is like significant it's like the imagine biz at that thing i don't even no. know what that is please please explain like i mean we got a, a lot of uh listeners who have the iq level of myself so what is the, exactly that you just said so it will be um anyone that is of significance in the economics in the world will be at it so presidents of the united states are there um elon musk will be there like it's like um the, the 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 whole town gets transformed into this place that is incredibly secure and incredibly done up and it's it's nice it's it's just an incredible place to go it's fun i know how and, elon, I mean, you you would never get in there you would no. never get in there well, the I, I tried get on that team biz the, the way that i hear that elon musk parties I, I might be able to get in there i heard those tech <laughs> i heard those tech geniuses party like maniacs they don't really do much drinking it's all hard drugs well, look at that guy from FTX. He'll probably he was probably invited there before he took down billions and billions of innocent people's money. But those people are they're psychopaths. They're yeah. lunatics. Yeah, yeah. But I was gonna say Davos is so beautiful. It's this amazing it's ski town. The amazing. rink is unreal. I tried getting on the team. The GM said he'd call me back. He never did. <laughs> but Joe Thornton played there. I think Joe Thornton's wife's from there. Yeah. He's played three different years, three different times. He's, he'll Walker, be so. there. Oh, he'll be he'll there. He'll be there because he'll go back for Christmas. Because oh, he, nice. they go, they spend a ton of time there. I talked to Joe, and they they spend a ton of time, um, go, yeah, going back and forth. Him and Rick Nash played together on that team in Davos when uh, during one of the lockouts, and then he skated with them up until a little bit. And there was like we definitely crossed the hey maybe Joe wants to come but he'd stop skating and is enjoying California so we were thinking he might. <laughs> that would have but, been a nice little wild card. You mentioned one of the assi- uh, one, we bleeped out the name but let's talk about Scott Niedermeyer helping out. Come on, who cares if that's maybe that's a little nugget we give the fans that he's going to be the assistant. How did you guys talk him into doing that? And I mean that's such a valuable acquisition to help out with these defensemen over there. Oh, you know what, Scotty, his boy and my boy play together. And then over the years, him and I have become pretty good friends. And I just, I enjoy him so much. He's such a good man to be around. He he looks like a professor. If you see him now, it's absolutely hilarious. Uh, I just, he's a guy that is on another level with uh, the way that he sees and thinks the game. So we asked him and he was, uh, he was excited, and I know that Lisa and the kids were excited, and so it's an opportunity for them all to come. So, he, um, He's probably just going to stay over there for that summit. That's, that's how big of a nerd that he looks like off the ice. <laughs> he does. That's not, no. a, that's not an insult either. That's just how intelligent of a hockey mind he, he was. He oh, beat you with his a, smarts just as much as his skills. Which is absolutely incredible. Sitting and listening to him talk about hockey is so cool because he doesn't, he doesn't, he doesn't talk a lot about hockey just but when he says stuff it's so good to hear he's the one thing he said to me the one time that i i asked him what makes him so good and he was like well i was just extraordinary at the ordinary 
He said, if I pass the puck, I pass it flat and I put it on the guy's stick in front of him. He's like, so I just did that, all that stuff really well. And I was like, well, Andrew could skate better than everybody yeah, else. Yeah, he's skating. That, I mean, that, that might have helped a little bit. But, but his theory is that to just be, do the ordinary stuff extraordinarily well and you'll be successful. And that's what he does. And, and so I, th- I think that's huge, especially for guys now. Like everyone wants to, I mean, do the Michigan and do all this stuff where they flip the puck in the air. And, and that's great. Like if you can do that, that's a huge asset. But if you can pass a puck flat to the guy that you're supposed to pass a puck flat to, then you're going to be you're going to have a chance, and that's what he did. Well, Donor, that's one of the reasons I wanted to get you on talk maybe a little bit about the state of hockey. I know that you, you've been helping out with the Arizona Coyotes on the ice. You were with them during training camp. What's your feel on on the way and the evolution of the game and where it's headed? It's absolutely crazy at how fast and quick their decision making is. Like, I think when when the, like we us joined the league. It was, and I was a, I was a ways ahead of you guys with by a few years, but it was like, if you wanted to work on your shot after the, after practice, you'd like take 50 pucks, set them in a certain, on the face off dot and take wrist shots from the face off dot, which is great. And then as my career kind of moved along, you, you take, you, you'd give a pass and then one time it. So you catch a pass one time or you get a one timer and shoot the puck. Then as I moved on further, it was like, well, I'd start with the puck. I'd pass it to you. You pass it back to me, and now I one time it, and that was kind of the progression. And now they're at this. I mean, now you talk to guys, and they're going as fast as they can, giving a pass, receiving a pass, and make and taking the shot. And now they're adding all the toys that they bring onto the ice. It looks yeah. like it's hilarious. <laughs> they have like it's like the golfers on. when they got those things on their head when they're trying to practice. Their, their it's like Tin Cup when he's in his trailer. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. And then he takes it in memory and he tells him take out take all the quarters out of your left pocket, put it in your right yeah. pocket. And I think there's an element to that that's true. Like without a doubt. Stop thinking. But yeah, because but now they do like the, the other day we were doing a drill where you start at the blue line. And you have the puck, you pass it across to the blue line, you both take off, you have to go past a pad, pass it back across to the other guy who has a choice to one time it or to catch it and release it. But he has to shoot through a pylon of or like a tripod pylon and has to get through them and has to be in the top half of the net. I'm like, what? I <laughs> like it's it's crazy on how they're creating these situations where your mind has to think all the way from when I broke into the league. It was like, well, you want to work on your shot? Okay, here's 50 pucks. Go shoot from the face-off dot. And it's like, well, that's probably not as the same as what they I can't now. even wipe my ass without getting shit on my fingers, and you want me to do that little fucking drill for crying out loud? Like, give me a break, man. No, but I hear you because you see these videos of, like, McDavid McDavid training and stuff, and you're like, this is a fucking joke how fast he's going and doing going through all these pylons and, like, dishing it, getting back, and then quick little backhand sauce at the top of the net. It's The game's getting oh. to an insane level. It is they when Austin Matthews and and Connor McDavid were down here business during the like when COVID and everything was going on. So Austin came and skated, and those guys were skating with me. It was like I would have paid to go out on the ice and watch. Like, yeah, I, like I played in this skating. league. Yeah, no, I never played in that league. I know <laughs> that I didn't play in those. What they were doing with passing the puck and and like making a hockey move like they'd be going as fast as they can have a pylon and instead of just going around the pylon they have to catch the puck and make a hockey move around it at top speed and shoot it before the next pylon like you're just constantly trying to speed up their mind and their processing and that's what's the processing is what's amazing to me and then they implement it in the games like if i tried something and i've seen wits i've seen you goofing around and doing stuff when you were playing too in youtube is where we do stuff that would be fun but we would never ever. dream of doing it in a game. No. Ever dream of doing it in a game. Because the coach would have benched you. And I you would be in the press be... box for another 10 straight. Yeah. <laughs> but then, but these guys think that they can do it, and then they do it, and it works. Did you see the guy the other night where he did a 360, he came down on the D-man, put his stick hard down on the puck. I saw that. What league was and that? Did a three... I don't know. I, I, but I'm like, I know. now everyone's seen it, and now everyone's going to do it. And that's what's probably changing the most is that, when the kids see it, Josh and his team, they see that and they're like, so now next day in practice are trying and doing it. And they're like, I'm going to do it in a game. I'm like, you're kidding that you think you can do that in a game. And it goes, and, I, and I'm not, I don't want to ever take away from it, but it does go back a little bit to what Scotty said. And, and, and you heard what Tord said the other day, which 
<laughs> I love torts, but I, I, there is an element of just understanding the game. Like that is a skill is understanding the game, not just having the skills, but understanding the point of the game is to score goals and to win the hockey game. Like if you're up three, one with six minutes to go, do not go try doing the Michigan because you don't need to like now you need to make sure that you just win the game. Now you're down by a goal and you're behind the net. It's different, but um, yeah. you just, you got to understand the game. And sometimes I think that's sometimes missing, but it's so fun to watch the stuff they can do. And I love the skill and I love that side of it. Well, that's why, that's why I asked Stevie why when we had him on, I said, you get a chance to maybe uh, grill some of these kids that you're drafting about like the, the way that their mind's able to process situational hockey, not the skill stuff, but, you know, in, in games, understanding, you know, structure and, and playing above the puck, puck management, up 2-1 late in the game, like what you're going to do with that puck instead of trying that fancy move. Now, like, I mean, from from being involved with a little bit of the management side and helping out with the Coyotes, is that something that you guys are able to talk to these young kids about? I, I, yeah, you do. You try to because you want you want the game to – the game's a two – it's a two-man game. Like, if you look at the guys that run, I think that's probably what's – well, I guess – hence is running with robert with robertson right now but it always is pairs like if you go through the leading scores in the league there's always two it's almost you go through it where it's obviously mcdavid and dry but like mitch marner and austin matthews you go to kucherov and, and stam coast or kucherov he can kind of go, brings other people along with them i think that's what makes sid so incredible because he seems to bring someone I, I, you look at Gensel and what he's doing it's incredible but it's a two man game. And I think too often we play the, when you talk to the kids about this, you need to encourage that side of it with the skills. Like it's a give and go game. It's a, it's, it's give and get it back, jump around, fake that you're passing, beat the guy one-on-one. -on -one. That's how the game is, is really designed to be played. And when the guys do that, I mean, that's what makes Boston's line so good is that they use each other so well. And I, I don't think any, one of those three guys, maybe Pasternak, and, and you know, Marchand's skilled too, but they're not the most skilled guys in the league. They just understand the game better than everybody else, and they move the puck well, and I think it's it's fun to watch. Who did we have on who was like, give and go, a give and go? I don't remember, but I remember laughing. At <laughs> who was that? It was somebody, I think it was for Kozlov when he was with the Thrashers. It might have even been Armdog. Yeah, Cause, it cause, been. Cause it's Because the, the give and go almost became a bit of a lost art. Where at one it point in time, that was how you would beat defenders. Well, what's interesting to me is is hockey IQ, like you guys are saying. It may not be the Michigan and all these, but it's like if you're a scout, that's probably the number one thing you're looking for, I'd say. Like maybe speed. I'd like to talk to a bunch of different scouts and that, but hockey IQ is where it's at. And the other thing I think about nowadays with the skill level is we didn't have, not that we could have done it, but we didn't have YouTube. And these kids now, they sit around and they watch YouTube and they watch McDavid over and over and over. And you can see all these different moves from all around the world on YouTube. So that's definitely a changer. But I'm wondering with your son, who's having a hell of a year with Arizona State. He's a great player. Was he into that stuff early on, watching all the guys you were playing against constantly on YouTube? Like, I'm curious how it goes for younger kids now, and you saw it firsthand with your own son. Yeah, huge, because they would see something, and then they'd watch it in slow motion, and they'd yeah. send it to each other, and then watch it again and watch it again. Where, like, for us, if we saw it on ESPN or TSN, it was like, did you see the highlight last night? And they're like, no, I missed it. Oh, man, you should have seen it. And then we're trying to explain. We're trying to explain. No, it to I was the at the guy. W Scottsdale. Biz like breaks yeah. his wrist trying to do the move out on the yeah, ice. Exactly. That's not even I was balls deep at the, the W Scottsdale. What happened? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Or, or you got that still. Or you got that going on. But um, it's, it's crazy now. Like they show it to each other. They slow it down. They send it to each other. I get it. They send it to me. I send it to them. Um, uh, you know, it is. I agree with that's 100% uh, a huge, huge difference. And the one thing that's negative about that, and I, and this is my old guy kind of come out me, is that the kids don't watch the whole game. And yeah. so sometimes, and so because of that, they see a, they see a play like that. And the reason it's a highlight is because it never happens in a game. If it happened all the time, <laughs> we wouldn't watch it. It's a highlight. So they think that, well, that's what I got to do. And I'm like, well, for 58 and a half minutes of the game, 
it's pretty simple. You have to do all the other stuff. And then in about a minute and a half of spread out throughout the game, there's these highlights that are, that are created and the kids seem to watch the highlights more than the actual game. And I think the hockey sense comes from watching hockey. Like you watch hockey and you start to pick it up and the story of Wayne Gretzky following the puck with his pencil and, be, and on the ice and seeing where the puck always goes so that he knew where to go. And that's the stuff that it just, I mean, that was like the first analytics of the game and, and it was how long ago that he did that. And that's the stuff that I find fascinating. Uh, I wanted to ask, because Biz had mentioned to me you were with Arizona helping him out a little bit, but that kid, Dylan Gunther, I mean, that's, oh. like, I think he's going to go play World Juniors. Is that true? Or no? Yeah. So, but I what think... a player. What a you start to his young career. And then Arizona had three first-round picks last year. So it is becoming a more exciting time, but I didn't know what you saw in that kid. He actually, he stayed with me for the first 10 days. Like, he when he came into town. Did you have him in, doing the construction on your house yeah. that's going on right now? Yeah. <laughs> no, that was. He's building no, a chapel in Donor's house. No, that was biz when he comes back from TNT. He's making 12 bucks an hour he's, helping you out. He's building one of the pews right now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <So>. right. Don't <laughs> swear. Yeah. So, told he, stayed, don't listen to him. he won't stop. <laughs> he stayed last year, not this year, last oh, year with boy. us. And he was, I, I, we have biz, you know, the hockey room where I have this hockey room where you can shoot pucks and stuff. And the kids and a bunch of the players have came by and shot in the, in the hockey room. And it's, it's about 40 feet. It's like a garage that I turned into, like, it's got hockey boards and the net in there. And he, so I came walking in and he was already in there shooting, which already made me like him because he went straight in there to shoot at pucks and he released the puck and it's actually startled me. Like I, I had really? to turn and look, his release is so effortless and so hard. And it looks like if I'm shooting the puck hard, it starts like in my toes. Like I am like, <laughs> Oh yeah. I'm like, oh, your yeah. teeth are gritting together. <laughs> yeah. I'm grinding my teeth and, it, and goalies have about, you know, a second and a half to two seconds to like tap their hands, shrug their shoulders. And like, okay, here it comes. <laughs> and then when this kid does it, it's like effortless. And it, you watch it jump on goalies and they fight it off. Like they're, even if they make a save, it's, they still startles them. And he did that. We were doing that drill the other day and he caught a puck. So we, he, we pass a puck and jump by and he takes a shot and it goes like just under the bar. Perfect shot. One timer. And it was incredible. And he skates back to the line, like no smile, no nothing. I'm like, whoa, 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 whoa. Settle kid. down. Yeah. Like, <laughs> you're impressed with that yourself. Like don't act like that didn't just impress you. He's, but he's a great kid. And I think he's going to have a, I really, really like him. And he's, He's way more than just his shot. He's, he has a great IQ, and our coaches have a lot of confidence in him and in playing in all situations. Have you asked him how he's been able to to like develop that craft? Well, well like he said, and he's like, this is he gives credit to obviously Austin and those guys that have changed their shot and that top hand that the top hand pulls as the bottom hand pushes and it gets more kick in their stick. I, I don't totally understand science. it. Science. Yeah. Yeah. You yeah, were bringing it, you were I, wristing it. You were bringing it yeah. back way behind you. <laughs> I'm, I remember to get loading up on my back foot and then I need the weight transfer. And then well, anyways, and then I rolled it from my heel to yeah. toe and then released. Yeah. It. Um, but these guys are doing it a little bit different. It's, it's so cool to watch because his hands and his, his, uh, the processing again is so quick. And that McBain kid does it incredibly well. And we got some young guys with um, J.J. Moser coming in. And How about Michelli? Uh, and, and a Michelli. Michelli. Unbelievable. I he's think a, he's, a fu- he's a fun player to watch out there. Oh. He's a little water bug. And he's from and Finland. He, like, I thought he was from yeah. Milan. Yeah. Yes. Michelli. <laughs> Michelli. Some, somebody might want to give the NHL a heads up and put his picture on the, yeah, on the page. That's kind of a tough look. He's got. He's almost at a point per game. Yeah. You can't even see his. You know, I know he's got. Like. And he's got your guys' He's got your guys' symbol in the back for his, <laughs> yeah. for his headshot. <laughs> the chicklets logo. Hey, be, hey, hey, ask him if we could sponsor him and we could put that up actually on NHL.com. Yeah, hey, 
you know what? If they don't have an, if they don't have a picture for it, they should just put your guys as say, hey, we'll give you our guy, our uh, our yeah. head guy. Yeah, I'll snap yeah, him off a couple I'll send him a bill. I would actually, if if you ever talk to him, I'd I'd like to interview him because he played in the USHL for two years, then went back to play in Finland. I wonder why if he wanted to go to college and came over here. But interesting story. But I had another question, and that relates. Uh, Kind of to the, the big news for the Coyotes, and that is, I believe it was the city council whoever okayed the new arena in Scottsdale. Now it goes to, I don't know, like the, the citizens can vote or the, the town. But probably cool for you to be a part of all that, I'm guessing, considering there's a picture you put in the shovel in the ground 40 years ago, it seems like, in Scottsdale. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's that got the is, same uh, contractor doing his house. That's why it's not finished. <laughs> <laughs> it's no. McDavid's. Um, they just poured. They just poured the foundation. <laughs> you know what? It it is. It was really cool. That's something that as a as an organization we we haven't made it easy. We haven't done it the easy way. Hockey the sure, hard way. God no. Hockey the hard way. Um, but at the same time, this is big and. Um, you know what, through the whole thing, the whole thing that happened for the last two years of doing this, um, the, the mayor of, of Tempe was very um, non-committal on either side, just because I think he was doing his job. Um, and he was just staying in the middle. And when the vote went through 7-0, he said at the end, like, this is a really, really good deal for Tempe. And yeah. this is a good deal for the citizens. And that, out of everything that came out, him getting on board with it was probably the most important and you hope that uh the votes may 16th and if that goes through then we can try sticking another shovel in the ground and try and do this all over again so um that would be that would be nice and uh it'd be a great location city of tempe's done a good job of of kind of revitalizing the downtown of it's it feels like a, a major city downtown Jonah, what's the uh, feeling among the locals Is a lot of optimism that the vote's going to go through yeah. Yes. I, I, from people, but people come talk to me, they're going to say yes. Right, like right. They, there's not a lot of people coming up to me being like, we hate you and please leave. So that's, <laughs> um, the, the, other I'm than sure that guy a- harassing Bettman at the press conference, you see him? <laughs> oh, I was there. I was, yeah. yeah he was, <laughs> Who was he, that guy? The mayor of Glendale. Was it? No, <laughs> I just, I just made that up. <laughs> <laughs> you know, where's my no. money, bitch? <laughs> um, the mayor of Glendale yeah, also works at Fuddruckers, too. Yeah. It doesn't even count. <laughs> yeah, exactly. so, Holy shit. Just to answer, yeah, I do believe that I do believe that it's positive. When we voted, though, in Scottsdale, the people voted 71-39 in favor, and then, um, or so, sorry, 29 in favor, 71-29 in favor, and then... 68 to 32 in favor because they made us do it twice and both times we won so um this is different because the city's already voted in favor at 7-0 where in the past it, we they didn't have the 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 city hadn't agreed yet so um i i'm excited i i hope it works because if it, they do it right this place could become one of the staple places in the whole league yeah yep. and that's the part that's um so exciting because that's i mean my belief the whole time and hey everyone can throw rocks at us because we've made it easy we've handed them a lot of rocks to throw so um but at the same time i I do believe and i have seen it that it can work here and not just work but really really flourish i like uh, i like when they got all the the tinfoil hat people that speak at some of these it has nothing to do with the rink itself it's like they're talking about area 51 and like spacecrafts and shit buzzing around you're like ah that's you in 20 (laughs) years like (laughs) it's like uh we're, we're, we're not here for that sir uh, don't, don't. I want to go back to Team Canada stuff for a minute. Obviously, no World Cup coming up. Uh, you know, geopolitical situation. The world kind of screwed up. What is the future of best on best tourneys now? Is it just going to be Olympics only? Are they going to go back to World Cups? What's your take on that? Well, I think uh, the World Cup would be amazing because you get an opportunity to see. There's nothing like seeing the best on the best. Like you start to look at what the U.S. has on their team and what Canada has on their team and and the Swedes and the Finns who came out of nowhere to be one of the dominant national teams. And the Czechs have this, and Czechs and Slovaks have this young core that's kind of coming up that in the next four or five years will be significant. And and then obviously Russia and Sweden. It's it's going to be hockey is is so much more than just of a couple countries it's eight nine ten countries and and i think that would be it's just so much fun to imagine seeing 
you know, seeing McDavid playing with McKinnon and and seeing Matthews playing with you know the the guys on the American team with Patrick Kane and the goaltend. It's just, I think that it's it's inevitable that it will happen, and when it does, it, uh, I can't wait to watch it. I remember '96 so well, like me too. Obviously, oh. that was that was one of the coolest things. I was devastated as a Canadian. I liked obviously '87 way better, but uh, hmm. '96 was so cool with Jr. and Walt being on that team and being here and seeing that happen. Um, it was great for our sport. I think we have to think bigger than just local. And uh, when you do the world stage, it just promotes the sports around the world. And uh, and you look at you look at what happened just. And I know this is kind of off top, but you look at what just happened with Team Canada's soccer team, where they made it after 36 years, and the amount of soccer that is. I mean, soccer has been growing in Canada for a while, but it's influenced and has had a dramatic shot in the arm for it with them making it to the world cup. And so when you get a team like Germany, that's starting to have some players that are starting to really become significant on the world stage in hockey and give them an opportunity with dry and, and Stutzel and those guys, all of a sudden you're like, okay, this is, it gets Germany involved. It brings in all the other countries, and I think it's great for our sport. It gives me goosebumps to think about where the state of hockey is at and where it's growing to. Um, I just wanted to touch briefly on that and how these other countries are catching up. Like, there seems to be a bit of a problem in Canada in a sense of the affordability of hockey. How are they going to figure that out? Because if they don't figure something out at a certain point, I believe that these other countries are going to surpass Canada from, from a skill and relevancy level at, at the, at the world stage. Hey, it's, it's going to be as the world comes smaller and smaller with everybody having the, like we talked about from YouTube and it's not like it's just happening in North America. Like if you're a kid that's playing now in in Slovenia, you're going to watch Kopitar and think that okay, I got a chance to play and I'm going to make I'm going to I see what he's doing and I'm working on my game and I'm watching my game and it's really going to improve. And so as Canadians, we're going to have to I mean, obviously I speak as a Canadian, it's you're going to have to understand that we're going to have to push the envelope and we're going to have to find answers to those questions whether it's through subsidies whether it's through programs whether it's through just finding ways to get the ice more readily available and uh, and that's probably the biggest part and the hardest part is trying to find that because as you add players you have to add rinks and rinks aren't cheap and you got to find ways and yet on our in, in canada i have noticed that there is more outdoor rinks that are done up so people can use them when when i was growing up there was outdoor rinks, but it wasn't like, it was like my neighbor's outdoor rink. It wasn't like an organized community. Yeah, town, outdoor like sub, yeah, subsidized. Yeah. I know what you're saying. Where they're and playing so now, a lot of games on there now. Yeah. Yeah. So now they're playing, but to still allow the free, the free time, because I believe that you only, you only get better when you really have fun. Like, and I know like you guys, what you guys do is bring fun into hockey and bring fun into, into the sport. And it's why you guys are so successful. And I think the reason why we need to do as a country at times is make hockey fun again, because when it's fun, people find a reason to do it. They'll always find a reason to do something that they enjoy uh, as long as it doesn't feel like work. And, open ice and the ability to go out on the ice and have a little bit of structure, but at the same time have fun creates a desire to come back the next day. And I think that's probably one of the best ways we can do it. Biz, that's like our buddy Sheldon Wolitsky from the Colorado extreme who he, he built a rink right outside of uh, Aspen for all the people in the surrounding towns of Aspen who can't afford to play hockey. So it's a big outdoor rink. He gives them equipment as well. And like, that's the stuff that we need to see more of in Canada. Yeah. The get, the get and there's back. a, there's a, I think there's a way to do like co-ops. I think co-ops in the small communities. Um, my brother and his wife are looking at trying to do a co-op in Stetler where you can buy you can buy your equipment for the year, and then at the end of the year, you turn your equipment back in, and for the next year, it only costs you a hundred bucks to get new equipment, and you get all new equipment, and your equipment gets passed along. And as long as you take care of your equipment, you you afford the ability, you give people the ability to afford it. And, and then all of a sudden it becomes a community thing and and then kids have the ability because the one thing that i think hurts people is if you want to start playing hockey it's a huge investment and if your kid changes his mind six months into it you're like great i can't get this back it's not like i get the money and so it's it's a 
eighteen hundred dollar, two thousand dollar buy-in, and the kid does it for six months. Where if it's baseball, it's like, well, I'll get you a glove and a bat, and all right, well, it cost me two hundred bucks. So if we could figure out a way that we could make it so it's it's a co-op kind of like um, what's the Christmas movie where the where the community gets the oh, the, the biggest a wonderful life. Wonderful life. It's a wonderful, it's a wonderful life. life. You need a co-op like that. What a movie. So, yeah, what a alone. movie, eh? It's black and white, so you got a lot of young pieces of shit that won't even give it a chance <laughs> to listen to the show now. But guys, I was one of those pieces of shit. I remember saying, no, I'm not watching this to my parents, and now I watch it all. They're just everyone. It's Christmas time. Check out It's a Wonderful Life. It's a story about life and being wonderful. Yeah. So yes. sorry. <laughs> no, I was nice. I should just shut up. Now. No, no, no. I like that. <laughs> I'm going to watch it. I don't but, think I've ever seen it. But the, the idea of a co-op where the community works together, and I think that's what we're going to have to do as a country, not just in like in the small communities, but in the country. Because the, the small communities are really paying a price now because you get so convinced that if you want to play, you have to go play in the city. Like you have to go play in Toronto or you have to play in Vancouver or Calgary, Edmonton and Winnipeg. But the small town kids are, are finding it harder and harder. and We got to find a way to make it easier for them. Uh, I want to go back to Davos real quick before we let you go. Um, did you ever do much skiing over in Switzerland? I was dying to ask you that earlier. Are you a skier? I'm not a skier, but I did ski a lot in Switzerland. <laughs> it is so much. It is. I went. I went cross country skiing, which what a I did. I did downhill. I did downhill too. Like the downhill is amazing. Like it's so cool. Like you go up to the top of Jakobshorn. That's the ski hill that it's at. Uh, right out, literally, like right outside the hotel. Like you walk out the door, you walk into the ski, like into the chairlift and up the hill, and it's amazing. But you can ski to three different towns from Jakobshorn. So you get up to the top and you ski down over to one, and then there's another mountain over there, and you ski down over there, and you could end up like 20 miles away. And they have a bus that goes constantly. Every five minutes, there's a bus going to the next place, so that brings you back. It's amazing the way they do it. So I did do the downhill. I'm not. I'm okay. I can do okay at downhill. I'm, I, I, it's like skating, so it's not that hard. Yeah. But I did the cross-country skiing, skating style. Oh, my goodness. It's it a, is yeah, it's it's a it's gassing. Work. Oh, it's exhausting. And you fall over all the time. And the, I, I did it every day for nine days straight. Did so you we really? The, how about the guys? We how about the guys who do that and the heart rate's up to one fifty? You're pumping, and then they get down, and then they in the Olympics oh, they, they shoot, shoot the gun something. off a bullseye. That's one of my favorite events. Away. Oh That's yeah, oh you've watched that a lot, Biz. I'm sure. Yeah. No, every time it's on, I'll watch it. I fucking watch it all the time. What do you mean? Oh yeah, yeah, sure, yeah. I don't sure. like set my fucking <laughs> television and I'm like I mean, record. That's an absolute, like I want to go back in time and see Biz setting the recorder for the Beijing. I never Olympics. said I set the fucking recorder. <laughs> I said it every time it's on, I'll, it'll stop me dead in my tracks. It is amazing though. Okay, LeBron. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay, okay, LeBron. Yeah. LeBron. Okay. <laughs> Le Cap. <laughs> oh, that's so funny. I actually, I actually competed in a, in a few uh, amateur games uh, by doing that. Oh my god! In Arizona. Oh, that, in Arizona. In Arizona. <laughs> hey, up at, up at Snowball. So. Now, before we get to the last question, it is brought to you by Chevy, of course, from Bolt to Blazer, Equinox to Silverado. Chevy EVs are for everyone, everywhere, and with an established full line brand like Chevrolet, we can offer multiple EV vehicles with the volume, variety, and the value customers all over the world have come to expect. Chevy has put together a team full of ringers, and may I remind you, they are affordable. You don't have to be rich to have an EV all-star capability on a rookie's budget. Now back to the interview. Well, uh, we're, we're going to be out there. Um, I was just going to ask quickly uh, about your, your kid. So he's probably loving yeah. the ASU experience, and that's going to turn into a juggernaut program. Uh, Powers and crew have done an unbelie unbelievable job. They got the new arena. Uh, he's obviously loved it so far. Oh, my goodness, yeah. They're, they're, there was a tough weekend. They lost to Denver in overtime, and then they lost 5-2 the second game. But if they'd won that, that would have given them a legitimate – a legitimate shot of maybe getting into then they still do getting into the tournament but um denver's number one they played minnesota the weekend before and they they won in overtime against minnesota and then they lost sorry they didn't lose in overtime they lost with a minute to go against denver and then uh they lost both games this weekend so that hurt but they're having a blast there's a kid from boston there actually he's from i think he's from rhode island that transferred from northeastern Schmelton, Felton, Belton, Melton, or something. His last name, the goalie, TJ. I call him TJ. I love the kid. He's a goalie, 
he's legit and he gives them a chance every night and obviously like you said powers and those guys recruiting and getting in some of the guys that they got in they have a pretty good team that's awesome yeah uh, buddy of mine's son uh tim lovell i think i think his oh, son's tim Timmy. i think his son's timmy right too yeah that's yeah, Timmy well, level. this he's have he's undersized this you see this kid skate it's oh crazy. is that the kid you were telling me that had to go on hormones yes. growth hormone yes this is a crazy story really? talk about it oh yeah man he was like tiny tiny benjamin button tiny yeah. Explain the story. It was, so like, I, the first time I saw Timmy play, I walked by I walked by a game and we were playing like U15s. And when I looked out on the ice, I thought I saw, like I thought I was like, they were doing warm-ups or something because they had like someone's little brother out on the ice. Like, And I'm not trying to be rude to Timmy because he's an amazing, amazing he is player. as good, a, oh, amazing player. And they gave, and he grew and now he's he's probably five seven five eight but at the time he was under five feet so it was like oh That's boy crazy and the way that he handled the puck and his edge work and the way that he could i was blown away by the kid and i him and josh have become really good friends and i love the kid he, we do we do family dinner night on sundays and they always bring different players over and Timmy's been over quite a few times. We do games and stuff. The kids have fun. And, yeah, his dad. Uh, uh, he's got a great. His motor is crazy the out kid there. Flies. Oh, nonstop. Yeah, non-stop. he kind of reminds me of a young Duncan Keith. The way that he moves. Yeah, a little bit. Yeah, yeah. 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 And, and supposedly his sister's the best of the group. Really? So yeah. So his father, Florida. his father started a hockey program. It's called the Boston Advantage. They've, I mean, he, yeah. he, I think he started at like 05. He played probably seven, eight years pro. I played with him in the summer league, super skilled. So it makes sense. His kid, his, his son is, but, and his daughter, but, um, yeah, I remember seeing his son and then I, he was at BC and going to Arizona state. So I figured, uh, I figured you'd know him, but yeah, great, great guy. And, and Mike, you know, Mike D'Angelis from the coyotes here, he's him and him and, Timmy's dad played together over in Europe and Ger- I think Germany or Italy. I'm not sure somewhere over there. Do you, uh, so, does Josh talk about, I mean, obviously probably not about like leaving school. I mean, he's taking it game by game, but still he's such a good prospect and had such a monster year last year. It's got to be exciting for him being drafted by the coyotes and knowing someday he's not going too far. Right. Yeah. I mean, his, his goal obviously is he, yeah, I mean, if you ask him is to play in the NHL and yep. um, at the same time, he's got a long ways to go and he's, Mm -hmm. and he's, he's, he recognizes that as well. And it's, it's a lot of fun for them to, you know, Hey, at that age, everyone's dreaming of of the next level. And we talk, we talk every now and again, that it's not a, it's not a sprint. It's a marathon and don't be in a hurry to skip anything because if you do, sometimes that comes back to haunt you. It's a cross country ski. With a a shotgun. (laughs) Minus the shotgun. (laughs) What's that? What's this called? Biz? What's that event called? It is called the Le Cap event. <laughs> no, I, I, but I, I, I'm saying is every time it's on television, it draws me in. I will stop dead in my tracks. I will keep it on that channel. That's one of my favorite Olympic events. Now, as far as the name's concerned, and I've been delaying my answer here to think <laughs> I may come to my head. I don't know. I mean, right. it's only every four years you get to see it. So uh, I can what's the name of the no, event? No, he watches the World Championship. The biathlon. The biathlon. Yeah. That's called the biathlon? Yeah. Bi yeah. meaning two. <laughs> Yeah. Athlete wow. I thought thing. biathlon would be a summer games. Yeah. All right. Well, Donor, we're, we're leaving you to our bullshit. This is the show we got to start now. But um, congrats on uh, you know the GM of the Spangler Club team. Hopefully, you guys you take it home. And congrats to Josh on uh, success at Arizona State. And thanks for joining us. Yeah. Yeah. No problem. And and it's and I I don't know if we can say it, but it's it's uh, Travis Green, uh, Claude Scott Julian. Neumeier. <laughs> and uh, Josh and Bab- Babcock's coming too, right? Yeah, <laughs> Josh Holden. Hold Do you Mike. remember Josh Holden? You probably played. Oh yeah, yeah, the D Man played in yeah, Vegas, yeah, yeah. didn't he? Uh, no, 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 oh, yeah, different. He's... Phantom. That's Nick yeah, Holden. I think. Yeah, Nick Holden. And then uh, our Danny Breer and Ray Whitney are helping me out on the match. No side. shit, you got Wizard yeah. too. Yeah, and Danny B, and then Tyler Dietrich, who's been great. He's awesome. So we got a good group. That's awesome an unreal group. crew. Nick Holden's still in the yeah. NHL. My apologies. <laughs> Yeah, all right. Josh, Josh Holden is coaching over in Switzerland, but he came in and he's a '97. What are you, right? Oh, you're way later. Than I'm that. an '83. Like I'm old. I'm turning 40 in oh, February. Sorry, he's a Oof. sorry 78. He's a 78. Oh, okay, so. okay. Donor, I'll see you on the hike. I'll, I'll be back in a couple right, of days. We'll yeah. go, we'll go yeah, hit the trails. We'll do a biathlon.
Hey, yeah, and no shirts, right? Shirts optional. Dude, tarps right? off. Get the get the tan. Get the vitamin D. <laughs> get them titties. Not bouncing. on me. Not on me. I, I'm not. <laughs> Biz can. Biz oh, can okay, still do Judge that. Judy over here. No, you can still do that. I can't. That's fair. All right. Uh, I love you, buddy. Thank you so much for your time. You that, that was great. Very insightful. We love you. Thanks. Thanks, guys. See Thanks, you, Donna. Thanks so much, Donna. Take care, pal. Folks, before we go any further, it's time to talk about skip the dishes. Who the hell wants to cook on game night? Not me. Drop the oven mitts and give your taste buds something to cheer about. Score some sushi, sauce your friend some spaghetti, or go top shelf with a gourmet burger when it's time for a celly. Skip delivers desserts just like cheesecake, ice cream, even a bag of ice if you're running low. Whatever you're in the mood for, it's always a win for the home team with Skip the Dishes. Now back to the pod. Huge thanks to Dona for jumping on. Such a nice guy, Biz. Isn't he just the epitome of a gentleman? I love how like he's, you know, clean cut fella, but you, and you just don't stop with the dirty, filthy jokes, and you can tell he gets a real kick out of them, too. Oh, yeah. He's, he is the best human. I had such an amazing time with him when I was playing with the Coyotes. He, he was a father figure to me. Yeah. Every time I was having tough times, I'd go chat with him, and he... The amount of time he spent at the rink and, and time and energy he gave to everybody, there would be after the game, it'd be twelve thirty at night, you'd be leaving the rink and he'd still be talking to people in the hallway in his get. So what he meant for that Coyotes organization, uh, you, you can't. You, I, I'd have to spend another two hours describing it all. So we nice. love you, donor. Thanks for jumping on. And uh, that was his what second or third appearance? Uh, third, I believe. But yeah. he watches. Mm-hmm. He catches Gun- Gunther shooting pucks, and he was catching you like rubbing one out. <laughs> so it's like it's a little different. Yeah, for him. yeah. He uh, he put up with a lot. He put up with a lot. That's He's for like sure. Yolanda. The immaturity level on me back then. Could you oh, imagine? No, I, I, couldn't. I it, couldn't. You see it now at 37. Back <laughs> yeah. then I was what, 25? Yeah. Uh, I'm not a math major, but uh, big extension signed uh, since we last met. Dallas Star, Rupe Hints, an eight year, $67.6 million extension. Comes out to $8.45 million a year. Uh, he's making 3.15 right now. He would have been an RFA after the season, but they locked him up. Great move here. The 2015 draft pick just turned 26. He's got 26 points in 23 games he played this season. Uh, he had career highs and goals, assists, and points last season. He's got basically the same deal as uh, Miro Heiskanen, uh, except uh, less fewer years for Heiskanen on the no move clause. But does this sound about right about? I think him, he's so? a horse. Yeah. I think he's, he's a, a fucking beast. horse. He ain't that talked line, about. Oh my goodness, dude! Is Pavelski, Robertson, and Hints. I think he went out and had a hat trick and an assist uh, in the game just the other day. So it's like. The cap going up definitely affects it a little bit, but the way he skates, how fast he is, he's physical. I love that deal. And 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 we've we've said it. The Stars could win the Stanley Cup this year. Yes, they could. They really could. If I could jump hey, on could, one could, wagon, could, could Kane I would jump sneak up. in there? Patrick Kane? Oh my goodness! Let the rumor mill. I don't know. Begin. I don't yeah, know it, cap situations, yeah, I don't think, but I, think I mean, I'm just like all over teams that can win the cup. That's Kane's going to go to a contender. We keep bringing up the cap situation, though. How much do you think that matters with Patrick Kane? Because like you said, he's going to have to matter a little. Because they're going to be able to eat a bunch, though, and then they can just take on draft picks. If they, if they're going to eat more money, you know what I mean? Yeah, I know. It's just it's we'll see, we'll see. I'm just I don't know how I just got to Kane again. My mind is just racing with yeah. where he's going to end up because Rupe Hints deserves a lot a of credit for the season he's had. And last year he was it was it was I think you're seeing it was no fluke because last year he just took off and that line's one of the best in the league. Joe Pavelski doing it at 39 years old the way he is is he even he might be 40. He's now. on drugs. I don't. He's a he's machine. on HGH. Machine. That's what you're trying to say. Uh, well deserved and and a guy that they had to lock in. And if you're having this much chemistry with Robertson, he ain't fucking going anywhere. Lock them both up. They can play together. And who knows? Joe Pavelski might be around when he's 47 still playing with those fucking guys. Yeah, no shit. But chugging out of the fountain of youth just like Yager. Uh, we mentioned uh, Robo in minus streaks earlier. Uh, Karel Kaprizov, he tied the Minnesota record in the same game. Uh, who? Who did? Kirill Kaprizov? Kaprizov, yeah. He tied the Minnesota record. He got a hit point in his 12th straight game as well. It's these guys What's set- with all these point streaks? I know. Well, I saw actually somebody uh, put a tweet up um, comparing McDavid and Robertson's first, like, yes. oh, uh, 100, uh, 100 games More or something. More goals for Robertson. Yeah. But Kaprizov, I think, might be like above both of them. Now, granted, McDavid was 18 years old. Kaprizov's but- 35, I think. <laughs> But it's crazy to see how, like, this guy, 
is so electric with the Wild. I watched the other night their game at home. It was like watching every single shift he creates something. So I don't think that streak's going to end anytime soon. No, no it's going to end next I, game. I have the side-by-side -side if uh, no. Robertson. Yeah, so read, read, read it out. So they each played in their first 152 games. Jason Robertson had 80 goals and 84 assists, while Connor McDavid had 56 goals and 117 assists for 173 points, while Robertson had 164 points. I mean... I like that breakdown. That's pretty legit. And now, like I mentioned, McDavid was younger and stuff, but still, this is just, it's wild to see what's happening in Dallas with that kid. It's And we interviewed him, I think it was last year. I remember I was in Florida during it. Just a down-to-earth kid, and like now you're watching every game. It's fucking crazy. His celebration in St. Louis was something else. He was kind of skating around like this, almost like... Getting cocky. Are you, are you not entertained? <laughs> getting cocky. He is getting a little cocky, like but that. how do you not get cocky when you get 25 well, he's, goals or whatever he has He's going to be the next face of the league. Also, That's the a, most listened to episode ever for Spit and Chicklets. Get the fuck out of here, Wait, Jason Ro Robertson. Yes, can, you, Robo? We had we had DJ on there as well. We had Dustin Johnson on there as well. So oh we, yeah, oh, okay. Well, it gave it a little yeah. kick. Oh, we, we had seven minutes yeah. with DJ. Yeah, yeah that, that fucking interview needed a Roman swipe. <laughs> Wit couldn't show up on time. No, Yans's internet. internet doesn't work. Okay. It is blame, fucking forty million dollar house blame, in Lauderdale. Blame O'Shandle. Going back to Kirill Kaprizov and what he's doing with the Wild, though, extremely impressive. And we can't sleep on these Wild. They got Revo. They they ended yeah. up losing in a game. Listen, they ended up losing a game to the the Anaheim Ducks, which stinks. But they got four wins in a row now, and they are starting. They blew a five one lead in the third period yesterday. But they won the game in OT. No, they baby. did. They're they selling did. the they game, did. bro. They They're they selling. Did. Yeah, but I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Many. You, uh, you I don't. don't know? Know. I don't know about this year. Oh, okay. Well, I'll tell Billy G you said that. No, please don't. I, I, I want to build a You're off Star the Wars list. Legos Ooh. castle with <laughs> beef. A uh, few more strokes here. Uh, Tuesday in Vancouver, Alexander Ovechkin passed Wayne Gretzky for the most road go road goals ever in NHL Biz history. has road kills. Oh, with, sorry. <laughs> uh, with his 402nd goal, he later added his 403rd. Vancouver defenseman Luke Shen passed Brooks Orpik, your old teammate, for the most hits by a defenseman since the stat started being recorded back in 05-06. Uh, Shen has 2,947 hits and 888 games played. Uh, there are five forwards above him on that list. Lucic, Ovechkin, uh, Matt Martin, Dustin Brown, and the number one guy, Kel Clutterbuck, with oh. 3,647 hits. Well, well in zone. zone. Well in I knew zone. that was coming. Listen, we love Cal Clutterbuck and well, and he's, he's, he's a legend there, but he has been dodging us for an interview and won't join us in the sandbagger, but yet he has, goes and plays against the four-play guys. So yeah. in one hand, Sweet he's a Welland. legend, and he's, he's the king of well, and there's actually a sign there when you drive in. Cal Clutterbuck. But on the other hand, fuck you, Klutzy. You're a sellout. <laughs> You're a sellout, bitch. <laughs> uh, and on the same night, his brother Braden played in his 800th NHL game, so uh, congrats to Braden. A uh, couple brothers making a little history. Uh, I think uh, Luke Shen, a good deadline acquisition if you need that sixth, seventh oh, defenseman. Yeah, that he's guy already got knows, knows yeah. his role. He knows his role. He's going to be physical. He's going to separate the man from the puck, and then that centerman is going to come low and slow and just swoop in and pick up that puck. Depth D man for Wait. a run. Roberto Luongo was added to the Canucks Ring of Honor, but a lot of fans were pissed off that his number wasn't retired. He was fine with the decision, you know. He considered it an honor and all that, but still, if you're a Hall of Famer, you get the ring. Why wouldn't your number be retired? with? you think like right? I mean, a Hall of Famer. Yeah, that's I would. A slam I would. Dunk. I would think um, to be in the Hall of Fame, it, it means I'm retired. Now, the argument would be that the pan he was he was with the Panthers for a lot of his career. You know what I'm saying? Like if you're an all if you're a Patri if you're a, a player for one team and you end up in the Hall of Fame, it's number retired, no question. Maybe it just changes in terms of not being with the one place, you know, the Vancouver yes, Canucks the entire point. time. So, um, but I mean, Ring of Honor, it's still, it's like, I, I don't even really see a huge difference there. It's still, you're always up there forever, and, and, and it shows you were an important part of a lot of good years. Well said, Whit Dog. Uh, the Bruins extended their record set in season, opening home winning streak to 14 games with a 5 1 win over the Cup champion Avalanche Saturday night. In danger right now. I think uh, the Knights are up 2 0, you just said, as we're, as we're recording here. I saw a thing um, that the starts co that are comparable to the Bruins right now, one of them is the 2013 Blackhawks, who you know went on 2012, 2013 Blackhawks. They went on to win the Stanley Cup. It's like you're now getting to the point with this Bruins team that it, it, it's going to be hard not to look at them as the number one cup contender. First round exit. And no, there's no Fuck chance. You. 
There's no chance. I'm just saying the There's Mushman no chance. over here said that. No, There's I, no chance. I'm hoping that they go on, and, and the Mushman are himself. So good. I, did, I said they weren't going to make playoffs this year. You said but, they weren't going to make playoffs? <laughs> you said they weren't going to make playoffs? Shut up. It's amazing. What happened? Honestly, no. I don't know what I said. No. How about Yan yeah. saying the Devils weren't going to make the playoffs? No, yeah, Dude, I, love I, that. I texted him right after that. All that was going viral, and I was like, "I'll never say this on Chicklets, but I agree with you. I don't think they're making the playoffs." <laughs> as now, just I, said, as, as I said, said, as I said, said on oh yeah. my god, yeah. you're walking up. No, but what happened was, is I, as I said, that there's one team that was getting a little bit older that was not going to make playoffs, and who we put in that picture was the Boston Bruins, the Washington Capitals, and the Pittsburgh Penguins, and I was teeter tottering yeah. between. The cap- to- towards the Capitals and the Bruins, and then I pick Caps to make it, which if I could jump back off that wagon, I would. I get a lot of tweets from Capitals fans complaining that we don't talk about them. There's nothing to talk about with you it's guys. And as a, as a fan base, like I, I, I'm not even – I don't hate you like the Rangers. It's not any of that. It's just what do you want us to say? It's a mid-team that looks like shit, and we understand the injuries, but – it's all about Caps injury. fans got to understand here that there's not much going on and there's not much to talk I, about besides I, number eight. I, I still think they can squeak in playoffs, though. I, they were, they, it's they had, gonna be they, hard. They, they for had that, forty man. million dollars in the press box at one. I understand, point this but season. one of those guys may not even play yeah, again, dude. That's fine. If, if they don't get back from back, that's a huge piece missing. But when Oshie came back, he added a jolt and to Wilson. that lineup. They won a couple games. Wilson's going to come back, bring that physicality. And and listen, they got some good good core pieces there. We'll see. They're not out of it just quite yet. But I at this point forward, clown knows on for saying the bees were missing playoffs. But the good news is, is if they go on a run, we're coming home. We're coming home. Eight, eighteen to one at the beginning of the year. We're Bruins, imagine having a couple home. bucks on them there. Eighteen what? to one. Bruins are eighteen to one beginning of the year. Crazy. Did Crazy. you put some money on them? Just how do you do? He got wooden nuts. Yeah, he bets yeah, every single team. Every nah, team. <laughs> no, but definitely the bees every year. But I mean, yeah. Back to the caps. I mean, mediocrity doesn't sell. I mean, it, it, you got to be doing real good or real bad to get some love on this show. If you're in the middle, then you're boring. So, so, so I think uh, talk posed a question. At a certain point, you got to become sellers and understand that your window is now closed. But they owe too much to Ovi and what's, what he's provided that organization to not still go for it year over year while he's under contract. He brought you a Stanley Cup. In if the next you, few years, you may see them going for it as in going for the Ovi goal record. It's going to change meanings. Hmm. The team's – they're on the back nine. It's I, I don't see – like how are they going to get better in this offseason? It's just – it's kind of now for the next few years going to be Ovi chasing the goal record, and that's going to be it. I hate to say it. I think the one thing that would hose them is is – hitting the panic button and moving on too soon from their two goaltenders last year, which have now moved on and are having career yeah, years playing, like, with New Jersey two one and, <laughs> and, and Toronto with insane numbers. And then you, yeah. you paid Darcy Kemper five times five. So he's he's he started out very strong. He's fizzled off a little bit. Um, let's hope he gets his game back because he's such a great guy. And uh, But other than that um, – there you go. There's your Capitals talk. There we go. Yep, there you go. Uh, we hit our quota for the season. <laughs> Pittsburgh defenseman Chris Letang uh, suffered a stroke last week, and he's going to be out indefinitely. Uh, it's his second one. He had one back in 2014 as well. Uh, he's in good spirits, and uh, we just want to wish him the best and yep. get him back out there soon. I know what you Yeah, that's, that's scary. Guy, and teammate. the fact that he had another one prior um, 2014. in his career, that's just crazy. And and. I feel like this one, um, from what I'm reading, I, I hope that's all true, is that it's, it wasn't as bad as the one in 2014. Um, so, you know, hopefully that is, in the, is the case. But just, you know, uh, he's a father, he's a husband. It's just, you think about that stuff right away. It's scary, and, and hopefully he comes back uh, stronger than ever. And I'm sure they'll make sure of it that, that he's not going to be stepping foot on the ice again until everything's a okay. Yeah. Yeah, they're rather, like sometimes a lot of people have strokes and they don't know. You don't even know until you go to the doctor. Like TIA, TIA, I think they call it. Like some, I don't know what it stands for, but basically, you think of a stroke, people falling down and all that. But sometimes you have one and you don't even realize you have one until you go to the doctor. But either way, let's get them back out there soon. Uh, what else we got here? Oh, the Brandon Wheat Kings, man. Oh, what a story! What a story! Uh, incredible yeah, story. incredible story. Kudos to uh, Jake Jason, uh, Calder Anderson, Nolan Ritchie, and Ben Thornton. Uh, they were driving home. I, uh, funny enough, they were at a Samaritan house doing charity work, doing some volunteering stuff, and they, they were going over over a bridge, the First Street Bridge, and they saw a guy kind of in between the, the highways, and you know they knew something was amiss. They actually banged a U-turn, came back to check on the guy, and you know he was in rough shape. The guy he was you know pe- uh, contemplating suicide, and um, 
who was Anderson, got out of the car. He said, I got out of the car. I asked him if he was okay. He informed me that things weren't great for him, and he was having some pretty bad thoughts. So I asked him if we could get him some help, and he agreed. Uh, he said, I think the biggest thing in that situation is just to ask the person if they need some help. And as soon as I asked, you could see the relief on his face knowing he had someone to care for him. Uh, I guess there are a few hairy moments in between because they had you know, a call for help, and it's a dangerous situation when yeah. someone's a, a, at that height in that situation. But uh, we got to commend these guys because not only for stopping and, and, and turn around to go help out and just having the wherewithal and the, I don't know, conscience. Not everybody can do that. And that, and that doesn't mean that those people who don't respond that way are bad people, but these guys were in that position and they did what you hope like, most human beings will do. And uh, we just want them to be recognized and for everybody to know what Absolutely. they did. Absolutely. Because it's uh, very commendable. And Especially also... Especially for so, like such young guys to have the, the wherewithal to just like know what to do in that situation. Know to so, stop. Yeah, so... Whatever they're doing in that organization, we commend you because that's a, that's a hell of a move and saving a person's life like that. That mm-hmm. is just you know tip of the cap to those guys. And um, you know I want to add this: if you know you or people you know are struggling with those type of thoughts, or worried about somebody, you can contact uh, Talk Suicide Canada at one eight three three four five six four five six six. Or in the States, you can call the 988 Suicide and Crisis Lifeline. You just dial 988. So, uh, you know, I know it's a serious topic, but one little thing like this could help somebody. So if you are in trouble or you know someone in trouble, call them. Nothing's those, ever that those. bad. But right. We, uh, nothing is ever that bad. Every, every single time we go to an event, there's at least one person that will come up and say, hey, you know, yep. you know, we were go- I was going yeah. through a difficult That's time. That's the best feeling ever. It's, a, it's the best feeling in the world. Most. And uh, actually in Columbus, uh, a guy was saying that he was having a couple tough years and then, uh, you know, he turned things around and he became a, a, a pilot for the, for the, what do you, what's the, for the Air Force. Our, our Air Force. Yeah, he was he an came, awesome guy. Yeah, he came up and, you know, oh, he just, oh, yeah, he yeah. seemed so happy. And it, I said, buddy, hearing that is the, the biggest compliment we can get. And, you know, it's like, like, like you said, all right, there's always somebody to talk to and it's always going to get better. And, uh, it's, it's hard sometimes for some people when they're deep in those thoughts. Yeah, absolutely. And when people do come up with us, and it's always great when people share, even if they're saying they, we kill time at work or whatever, but when they get very personal, it's very powerful for us to hear that, man. I mean, we get emotional here, it because, you know, we do this fucking goofy hockey show and talk about peckers and dicks and oh, balls. Oh, we and all then, go through our shit. We're scrubs. And then we nobody. Yeah. And yeah. it's like, you know, man, it's, it's a little deeper than that. So it's, you know, it sucks that people go through that, but it's nice to know that, you know, we're doing a little something extra. So uh, it's it's always emotional to hear that. And uh, last note, I got here with U.S. out of the World Cup. I mean. Yeah, I mean, it, we would just quickly go over it. I, I, I was rooting for the U.S. I, I, I really enjoy soccer. I got into it. Uh, when was it? It was just about a little over a year ago, maybe a little over two years ago, actually. And um, the thing about U.S. soccer is, and there's diehard U.S. soccer fans out there. It's great to see. I just. I don't understand like where fans of U.S. soccer think the team is at or is headed. You look at all these elite teams, and maybe the goal is always just to kind of get out of the group stage, but you look at all these elite teams, like they just lost to Holland or Netherlands, whatever they're called, the Dutch, they have like three names. But, I mean, the guy, one of the guys who scored, he's a striker on Real Madrid. Like, there's... It, we don't have anyone like that like you 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 look at all these teams they're they're elite players at the in in, in spain and in england it's like u.s has Pulisic. they needed like, like three of Pulisics. that was the thing yeah yeah they don't but he doesn't even like light up the premier league no. he's like doesn't even start a lot of the time it's just u.s is so far away from like legit contending to win a world cup so it's great that they, i guess they continue to get better although I don't know. They they I, they actually got to the quarterfinals. I think in the two thousand, maybe two thousand two. They two thousand two. Two thousand two. So it's. I, I just don't know what people think is going to happen. It's every very year. It's bizarre. Like I know because because you just mentioned Dutch the hall. Ho, like what what's the I size? Of, people live there. There I must know. be fifteen twenty million people. And in the more country. people play soccer in the U.S. than hockey. And hockey. And it's just now. Granted, it is a global sport. Every single country it seems has good teams and great players, but. It's so weird to me that people like consider the U.S. like oh like and uh, yeah I'm rooting for them and I hope they they move on but it's like you're seeing the, like look at Brazil they got these guys in France and England that just they're lighting it up and it's like no there's no players like that from the U.S. so kind of an odd thing maybe in the next ten to twelve years it changes well it's coming here that the next World Cup's in in America North America no North I know America. but I'm just saying like when will the U.S. get a, when will the United States have a legitimate like top ten soccer player in the yeah, world, yeah, like a superstar. You know what I'm saying? And the the hard part is, it's probably like 
you basically have to go to England or France or Germany when you're like 14. Like it's like that's you, what they, they have these academies. And, so. and or you keep growing the game over here. And there was uh, an interesting thing that uh, Grinelli sent me over on TikTok. And I know we're switching over to M- oh, M- MLS right now. But when when David Beckham came over, describe the story, Green. I'll hand it over to you. Yeah. So when David Beckham signed with the Galaxy, and this is this is just me seeing a TikTok. But when David Beckham <laughs> signed with signed with the Galaxy, he he took a lot less money. He took like a seventy five percent pay cut. But they also gave him merchandise. They gave him all these different like uh, percentages. But the the main thing was they said in that contract that. Whenever you want, at any time in your life, you can buy an MLS franchise for $25 million. Those franchises are now going for $250, $300 million. So, oh I mean, Dave even said his Inter Milan team that he purchased is upwards of $600 million. David so, Beckham's part owner of Inter Milan? He owns the team, yes. Does part of, maybe, by no, the way, the guy, Inter, the guy Inter Miami. Inter Miami. Inter Miami. Inter Miami. Back, back up. I was like, what the yes, fuck? It's, yeah, no, 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 it's Inter Miami. So, 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 so now he's part owner or or majority owner yes, majority owner of of an MLS team of Inter Mil- of Inter Miami and he got in for 25 25 million wow. and he could sell it now for so, 300 and, and now the rumor is that Messi's coming over to Miami no that's the rumor so all of a sudden the growth starts the popularity you have probably the greatest soccer player of all time and and is it Lionel it's uh, Lionel. I would say Lionel. 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 By the way, the guy from the Netherlands, he plays for Barcelona. I said Real Madrid, but nonetheless. So, we're just butchering so, so, all so, the No, no, no. We are, we are, but we're, we're like not because we're actually talking about. I mean, now, what I think is cool, and the st- city of Boston is so ridiculous, they shut it down, but these they're building like 10,000 seat stadiums. That's all you need. Austin, and they're, they're packing they're them. Packed. That's perfect. all you need. Dude, they tried to do it. I think they wanted to do the revolution behind BC High. Yeah, Atlanta's year, team and goes they crazy. Shut it down. Kraft has but, been trying for but years. It, it's like that, that, but I still, I don't. Hopefully that's, yeah, that's the beginning of it and Messi coming over, but Beckham came over before. It's just like, I don't know. I don't know what it is, but we're hoping at some point there's like a superstar soccer player from the U.S. You need to put these are- these stadiums in places where people are going to go watch. They're not going to go to Foxborough. You know what I mean? Like the uh, a soccer community is is inner city. You know what I mean? So many yes. foreign people come and live in these cities. True. So it's like put the stadium in the city. I don't wonder, put it 45 uh, minutes outside. I Toronto Toronto did a have. good job by not building the stadium too big. So it's the perfect size. Yeah, you don't great. want. I mean, you know, sometimes we're overseas. The how big are the soccer stadiums? Like when you when you start oh going to British Premier League, you talking fifty thousand people? Uh, yeah. I mean, I would say that that the stadiums that are even bigger. I don't think all of them are that big, but yeah. I mean, it's huge. There's there's. Uh, Tottenham's got to have fifty thousand. That's a new stadium. You just have, have to NFL make it games. an environment that you look at and you're like, "Well, I want to go and, and get entertained in that type of atmosphere." Exactly. I don't want to sit in an empty fucking stadium. Exactly. So, um, uh, the other thing that could be it is like so many of these countries. I mean, these people are so poor, and they're playing soccer in the dirt, and they're playing soccer wherever they can. They're playing soccer with not even a soccer ball. So, so cheap. And and and. Maybe in the U.S., like so many more people are playing with money. It's like, what's the saying? Like, a hungry dog ain't. You know what I'm trying to say? Like, yeah. No, I, I, you know I, 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 I know, mean, I know the saying, but I don't know the fish. saying. Something like, you know, I know what you're we, saying. You know what I mean? Yeah. I, we're a fucking joke. It's time to end this episode. <laughs> um, I do want to, uh, I want to shout out. Our brains um, are fried. We're uh, on the road. Uh, the trip to Jamaica was amazing. You're on Jamaica we, we had, time, Jamaica, man. That's Ma, why had, you're all fucked up, caddy, brother. Ga- I had this caddy gas. I'll share this quickly. This guy's unbelievable. Actually, a bunch of people. I had had a friend of mine who goes there, uh, who has a house there, mention you got to ask for gas, the caddy. And then people were writing me after I mentioned I was at trial club. Ask for gas. Ask for gas. So we got in touch and we had him out there. Guy's unreal. I think he's been there about 30 years, just smoking the John Ganja, man, and drinking the red stripe the whole round. Actually, the only time I ever saw this guy get stressed at all was when he, on the seventh hole, he like lost his weed bag. Uh, it was like <laughs> seeing a Jamaican like run around. You're like, what's going on? <laughs> These people don't run around besides Usain Bolt. They're the fastest people in the world. But you know what I'm saying? But, um... <laughs> So I'm like, gas, why why are you called gas? And he's like, man, I, I can't do the accent. He's like, man, my brother, he's older, man. He, 
He's working in a... I'm not even going to do the accent. I can't do it. His brother was working as a mechanic, and he was three or four years old. And apparently his brother bought, brought home, I don't know why, but a bunch of gas and put it on top of the fridge. And gas, just little three, four-year-old gas, decided to drink most of it. And they found him, like, passed out. And his mom rushed into the hospital, and they brought him back to life. So he's gas. So I, I was like, holy shit, gas, man. And he's like this... Yeah, man, respect, man. Good wedge, man. I couldn't putt worth a shit, but um, I might start putting less. This was the contract. I'm actually yeah. getting true. Um, what are, no, yips. what is it called? Full swing. Yeah, I do have the yips. I'm getting the full swing putting simulator put in my basement. So shout out Joe Rathburn and Ryan O'Keefe from Full Swing. They're helping me out, dude. You change the. You can change the the whole I've thing. I've heard about it's like this. On like hydraulics. Yeah. So if I can't putt after that. I don't know what to do. I might switch to I think to you're lefty. overthinking it. I, I just might... show up. I don't even go to the practice you're range. You're a great putter, too. I'm a great putter. Um, yeah, what else? It's all about the feel. I would say this was the contradictory pod because each of, each one of us contradicted ourselves Shocker. numerous times. I'm, hey, Wagwan, go, go, go on, go on. How about everyone's writing me? So I said Wagwan <laughs> me, was like means what's up. Well, it's actually saying what's going on. Wagwan, man. So all these people are writing me. It means what's going on. I'm like, dude, what the it's fuck does difference. what's up mean, you idiot? Like, yeah. To write me a message, to send the time to tell me it doesn't actually mean what's up. Like, what's going on means what's up. So, yeah. wagwan, man, respect. Uh, you're talking about David David Beckham, Biz. Uh, what the fuck do you know about David Beckham, all right? Well, I know he's married to Victoria Beckham. <laughs> oh, my God. Who is so does posh, the rest posh, of the world. Posh Spice. Who, huh? Right. And you know what? I met her four bandmates right across the street about 25 yeah, years Yeah, the ago. Spice Girls. Right. I legit went to the Stones uh, a few years with my buddy Rory and Leahy. We flew down for a Stones concert, and we got buckled before we went to the show. And I I was always trying to move down to get a better seat. Now, here's, I think I might have told the story years ago, what, even before Biz. When you, when you get caught in the wrong seats at, at, at uh, Madison Square Garden, back when you had the original ticket, well, what the ushers do is they – pull a corner off your stub so if you get caught again trying to get in a better seat and they see your no fucking shit. stub they'll know you already got popped because they've pulled the and corner off and they'll toss you huh and Why then they'll toss, toss you so anyways i was trying to worm my way down the floor because it's the stones and fucking i love the stones and all of a sudden i see like all this hubbub on the floor like 15 rows back and i was like oh my god it's fucking the spice girls because they were dressed like as if they were in concert all the oh and as they're walking out the place is going nuts you know, you know, yeah, before it? the show yeah everyone's like oh my god it's a, like a hubbub about it so like I'm like, oh fucking holy shit! So, two of them, like two of them, go toward the seats, and I literally like jumped in before the other two did. And I wasn't gonna try to sit there. I was just like, hey, I, and I knew all the names. I was like, hey, hey baby. baby, I goes, I just want to tell you how much I love your album. Like, I didn't even oh have a my album. god, it's like me talking to LC. Did from she the give hills. you the the, the, no, the dead fish? No, they were. That's the funny part. They were so polite. They're like, oh, thank you, thank you very much. Like, and I shook all oh, my hands, oh, and oh. like, they taught. They, you know, they get like, get the fuck out of here. And I went back to the boys. I was like, guys, I just met the Spice Girls. They're like, yeah, whatever. And then like five minutes later, all the paparazzi were on. I'm like, holy shit, they really out here. So I hear David. Beckham, I think, am I uh, meeting four of the five That's Spice awesome. Girls? That's awesome. No, I, I mean, I, yeah, I, I fucking still rock Spice Girls tunes. Yeah. I think I bought the CD when I was in high school. Ta-ta or no, maybe I, I, was, I was still in grade school when that came out. So I tell you what I want, what I really, really want. So tell me what you want, what you really, really want. I want to, I want to, I want to, I want to. They were a fucking I want to get this RA guy out of my face. I want to stop recording this show. All right, on that note, we should call it a show. Fantastic one, everyone. Love you guys. Take care. Peace. Happy birthday, my boy Jay. Love we'll you. see you in Newark.